Welcome to Tabula Rasa, bitches. Hello, hello. Hello. My name is Allie, and my pronouns are she, her. And I'm Nick, and my pronouns are he, him. And welcome to season two, episode 15 of Tabula Rasa, bitches. We're so glad you're here. In Tabula Rasa, bitches, your co-hosts discuss and dissect Buffy the Vampire Slayer, a show that bonded them together so many years ago. In this episode, we will be discussing Season 2, Episode 15, Phases. And Nick, today is a super special episode. That is so right, Allie, because today we are joined by our favorite couple of small-town gays, Kyle and Zach, also known as the Buffy Buffy Gays! Gays. (laughs) And how lucky we are to be graced with your presence. You're so lucky. (laughs) We are. We're so psyched to have you here. Thank you. We're psyched to be here. You know, this is the first Buffy collab we've done. We've uh, had people on our podcast to talk about things, but uh, we haven't been on anyone else's podcast to talk about Buffy. Oh, yay. Well, we're honored. How lucky we are, especially after we had such a a blast collabing with y'all for the uh, iconic unaired pilot of Buffy the yes. Vampire Slayer. That was so fun. And editing it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is such a good episode. Yeah, Tabula Rasa fans, if you have not already, we definitely shared it when it came out. But you should definitely go over to the Buffy Gaze and check out their bonus episode where we talk about the unaired Buffy pilot. I mean, you should also listen to like all their other episodes, but especially that one because we're on it. Uh, I had well- never heard of it before, so... And don't be afraid if you don't find it immediately, because by the time this comes out, it'll be kind of far down on the feed. Yeah, yeah, you may have to scroll Probably. a bit. Scroll a bit. I don't, we may, I don't I'll be know. nearly done with season three, I'm sure. Y'all, but yeah, just record and churn out real quick, and I don't know how y'all do it, but that's kind of a good segue into my first question for the two of you kiddos. Please tell us about yourselves, your pronouns, tell us about y'all, just... Tell our inter- introduce yourselves to our to to the good people outside of this squadcast. <laughs> <laughs> I am Kyle. I uh, use he him pronouns, and you know I'm just a dude here with another dude. I'm a former teacher, former music teacher, uh, current uh, service employee. <laughs> you know, kind of kind of uh, do it doing some new stuff. Yeah, uh, like lots of teachers and former teachers out there. Uh, and I really love Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I'm excited to discuss it with you guys. And I am Zach, uh, also a former music teacher, and my pronouns are he, him. And yeah, we're both going back to school. We are We are also a couple. Did we say? Uh, I was going to say that, but I guess you can if you want to. In your face, I got there. First. <laughs> so yes, we are involved in a tumultuous romantic relationship. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Tumultuous? No. I was going to say that part was news. The seas are stormy over is this here. Gonna so get, well, is this going to get awkward? Is it going to be a weird episode? We're, uh, we'll see. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to make any promises. What What phase of the relationship are we in? Tumultuous right. or not? Hey, that was good. That was good. You don't have to answer that. It was just good. <laughs> what a segue. Uh, it's just a phase. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure in a few months we'll both find out that we're straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the phase we're at. We're finding out we're actually straight. Yes. Ooh. Yikes. That's going to make the podcast really awkward yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have to change it to Buffy straight. <laughs> it doesn't roll off the tongue. Wouldn't that be a weird introduction to like season four? Everybody just suddenly sees you with no new artwork and like new labels and everything. <laughs> what? No pride we, flags. We, yeah. We adopt the, uh, the super straight flag. Oh, God. Wait, are you guys? Okay, wait. Remind me. Do you guys do spoilers? You you talk about everything, right? For this no. episode, we attempt to avoid spoilers beyond today. Okay. Today's episode, we have, okay. We have not always flourished at that. But. Yeah, we <laughs> o- well, we often like subtweet, kind of like if you know, yes. you get what we're talking about, but okay. hopefully, it doesn't spoil anything okay. for new people. And yeah, we have lots of experience with that. Okay, I'm glad I asked because I was just about to drop like a big spoiler reference. Sorry. Uh, did you know that Willow, Xander, and Buffy die three episodes from now? <laughs> it's crazy. And they die after a threesome with each other. Snape kills Dumbledore. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, Kyle and Zach, I would like you both to talk about your experience with Buffy. When did you start watching? Have you seen the whole thing? Talk about 
yeah, talk about your experience with Buffy. Uh, I started watching Buffy when I was in middle school uh, and my oh, oh, my best friend at the time had introduced it to me. It was on Logo TV at the <laughs> time. They were doing uh, reruns on Logo TV. If you don't know what Logo TV is. It's a controversial was. one for a nice closeted boy to be watching. Yeah, in middle yeah, school. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, I so we had Dish back when people had satellite television. And our package just had Logo in it for free for a long time. No, so it's... I got to watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer and try to watch RuPaul's Drag Race sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so if you don't know, Logo TV is a television channel that doesn't really exist any. It doesn't exist anymore. It just does online stuff or something. But uh, it was all for LGBT programming. So I caught reruns on Logo TV. I started in season six, and my very first episode was Double Meat Palace. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, oh wow. Those are some and- visuals. Yeah, right. Exactly. And ever since uh, I just, uh, you know, I've watched a bunch of it here and there. And uh, through our podcast, I actually I've seen a bunch of the first two seasons for the first time, like a bunch of those episodes I hadn't seen. Oh, wow. Uh, we are at the point now where I've seen everything. But uh, it's been it's been an interesting ride. What about you, Zach? I saw Buffy for the first time. Um, I think it was my sophomore year of college. And I had a friend who was just really into it. And he just kind of sat me down on the couch and was like, okay, let's watch it. And I was like, ah, uh, yeah, I'll watch it. And he's like, no, 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 sit down. We're watching it. <laughs> and so we watched it and I was like, the bumpy faces are dumb. I don't like that. <laughs> and then he was like, no, 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 just watch it. And then we, we got through the first two or three episodes. And I mean, what the second episode is which, right? That's the third, third episode. episode. Third episode, third episode. So yeah, of course I was hooked by witch because yeah. <laughs> anything with witches in it, it's got me. Hmm. And, Zach and, was a witch at uh-huh. that time. No. Or no, it was before that when you were in high school. Yeah, I had a witchy phase in high school. Obsessed. Uh, I love it. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, I I ended up loving it and watching the entire series and binging it when it was on Netflix. And then it became for me, uh, I have a thing with shows where the, when I really, really like them, I just watch them over and over and over again. And so I've seen the show at least 10 times all the way through. Um, yep. And probably more than that, actually, just in the background. I'm terrible at watching new shows. I don't know if that resonates with you, but I just <laughs> yes. like, like really yes. Parks and Rec, just over uh-huh. and over and over. Buffy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Zach, for sure. Zach does an entire rewatch of The Office once every two weeks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you fall asleep <laughs> yeah. to it? Is that how that happens? Sometimes. Or he I does just, his chores while it's on. Yeah. I just yeah. have it in the background. Also, Downton Abbey, that's another one. Yes. Mm. And it's six feet under. It's a random assortment of things, but I have I have a few shows I just kind of cycle. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. But yep, that is my uh, experience. <laughs> Whoops. <We're> all... <laughs> Zach, Party has, foul. Zach has fancy cup holders on this table that we just fixed and uh, I guess some condensation sticked to them. The inside <laughs> of them being metal is not really conducive yeah, to right. broadcasting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and usually, usually Zach hits his microphone stand all the time. Now mm-hmm. I'm just like fucking with the cup holder all the time. I but used anyway. to use a I used to use a microphone stand like that that I was constantly hitting. And then I realized that I have this beautiful, really simple one, and now I never hit it. <laughs> that's that. Uh, 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 that's hey, nice. look at that. Twinning. Yup. Yeah. 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 I, I just bought it one uh, from B&H that's supposed to be here on Halloween, and it's like, it's another kind of crane arm one, but it's nicer, and it's supposed to be quiet. Yeah, that's where my dad, that's where I got the stuff, because my dad's a photographer, so he has a B&H mm-hmm. account, and he was like, ah, let me just, like, you pay me, and I'll put in the order in. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. where the good stuff nice. is. All right, so our next question, tell us about and plug, obviously, your podcast and your niche in the hashtag Buffyverse. Yes, uh, so we are Buffy gays, and our niche in the hashtag Buffyverse is that we are learned scholars who deeply analyze every episode. No, just kidding. It's that we are gay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and, uh, so what? Really? You're gay? <laughs> what? Cool. Okay. I it would not guess by the name. Yeah, it was just a publicity stunt. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we go through each episode, and we recap it, and we uh, talk about the episode and random shit throughout. And uh, then at the end of each episode, we do uh, an analysis of the themes that are relatable for queer people in the episode. And we also pick the gayest moment of the episode. And also, I thirst after Angel and lots of uh, the other men in the show a lot. Oh, yeah. Hey, us too. (laughs) Fun times. Yes. I mean, are you really even watching the show if you don't do that? Exactly. I mean, yeah, that's how I feel. 
Yeah. Oh, there's Zach hitting the microphones. <laughs> No, there's um, definitely going to be a lot of that analysis uh, appropriate for this episode. So I'm, oh, I, look, yes. I look forward to all of your impo- input on that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- this was a question I was going to pose to you, but I decided I'm just going to answer it and you can add to it if you'd like. The question is to tell us about how this dream collab came to be. But I want to answer that first by saying the Buffy gaze when we had just launched on social media hadn't even put out a trailer yet hadn't put out anything the I was like following a bunch of people and the Buffy gaze um slid in the dms and said Mm -hmm. welcome so glad you're here in this Buffy burst just wanted to say hi and it was so kind and welcoming so it's just such a dream come true to to have y'all on now Yes, and I just have to mention again that I was the very first p- person to listen to your podcast on your feed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally the first. Yeah, we need to get you a badge of some kind. That's I, right. I, I oh, need great. one. I'll make you one. <laughs> I was like head boy, but no, that's Harry Potter. Some- <laughs> <laughs> Eccentric. Um, you did uh, tell us about your podcast, but you didn't actually plug it. Where do people find you? Oh, oh we'll we prompt are... you again at the end too, but yes, yes. Thanks. Yeah, yes. We're Buffy gaze. You can find us at Buffy gaze on all the podcast places and on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. We're bu- at Buffy gaze pod and you can find us there. I, uh, I upload stuff to TikTok every week and we do a post for each episode on Instagram. I'm not great at Twitter, but it's there. <laughs> I have to ask you about, TikTok at some point. Sorry, Ali, you were, looked like you were about to say something. Go. Oh, no, I was going to say, I mean, it, can anybody be good at Twitter? <laughs> right. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter's a losing game for everyone. And involved. now it's been like yeah. taken over by some right wing billionaire odor, or something. So that sucks. Yeah. Something, yeah. About, something about body odor. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's just changed so much. And like, like now threads are in th- just like it's a whole different beast from when it first started that like if you were good at it, you're probably not good at it anymore. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really easy for uh, for shippers to flame you on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, man. Yeah, if you piss somebody off, oof. Oof. <laughs> Yikes. Big no, oof. This must be an angel. Oof. Oof. <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's launch into our episode summary. Uh, As usual, we'll do our best to avoid spoilers beyond this episode, but today we'll discuss this episode, spoilers and all. Willow and Oz are fresh off a great movie date, but Willow tells Buffy she wishes Oz would make a move. Xander and Cordy are having a smooch session in the car when they're interrupted by a werewolf. The next day, the gang assesses the damage to Cordy's car and decides they'll track down the werewolf that night. Buffy and Giles meet on their hunt an asshole werewolf hunter, Kane, who is hoping to kill the werewolf and sell its pelt. And we're hoping to kill Kane and sell his pelt. Kane Ooh. tells them the werewolf is attracted to sexual tension, so Buffy goes to the bronze. Duh. She sees the beast, but it escapes into the woods and awakens the following day as a confused Oz. The gang suspe- suspects Larry's the wolf, so Xander confronts him, but finds out that Larry's secret is actually that he's gay. Oz has put together that he's the werewolf and plans to chain himself up at his house that night. Willow shows up to confront him, but Oz changes into his werewolf form. Willow runs away and makes to the library. She, Giles, and Buffy learn that Kane has found Oz. Buffy stops Kane, then scuffles with werewolf Oz, and Willow manages to shoot him with a tranquilizer gun. At school the next day, Willow and Oz decide to perceive, proceed with their relationship carefully. My, I talked to my dad right before we recorded this. So this is fresh on my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, dad, if you're listening to this, well, no, he told I me can. he's not going to be listening anymore. He <laughs> was like, I listened to the first episode and I just didn't get it. And I was <laughs> like, thanks for the feedback, dad. Really appreciate that. Wait, like didn't get us or didn't get Buffy? I think that he didn't, he couldn't. It's fair, honestly, because listening to that episode summary, if you had never watched Bobby, didn't know anything about it at all, and you listen to this episode summary, you're like, tranquilizer gun, and a <laughs> dude like comes out of the closet, and a I werewolf. This was a show and about like, vampire. I don't know. My grandma listens, and she enjoys it very much. And as far as I know, she doesn't watch Buffy. So I don't know, Ken. 
So Ken, get it together. Get it together. <laughs> Let's go, Ken. My mom listens to our podcast, and she just she commented Aww. once on how much I, cur- I curse. Yeah. Taking that said, mom you- bingo. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. She said, "Kyle, you say fuck a lot." <laughs> okay. My mother-in-law was like, "It has a bad word in the title. I don't know if I can listen." I was like, <laughs> "I was like, if you if you're turned off by that, right? You don't don't listen." That's and we didn't even <laughs> spell it out. We even put we didn't even like technically it's spell it's censored. It out. It's a yeah. censored one. So yeah. my first note for this episode was, yay, Oz episode. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's so nice to see Oz after all the little, like, the, the little snippets of him in the season and then him coming in in Surprise and Innocence. Oh, yes. He's, oh, I just, every scene he's in, I just, everything about him, the character, it's just so great. He's always so funny, but when I really fell in love with him was in Innocence, the last episode, when... <laughs> He, they're in the mall and the the blow up has just happened and he's like <laughs> arm <laughs> yeah it's so so many of great oz lines basically every scene he's in it's like well should we just like include the whole transcript because like i don't even know which quote to yeah, pull right. out because it's all great exactly. always cool as a cucumber yeah a yes, cucumber I'm- <laughs> mm. uh, he has some of my favorite lines just in the whole series for sure throughout. and they brought the, I love this so it starts off Oz is looking at the cheer trophy that Amy's mom is trapped in yes. and I was like yes mm-hmm. referencing previous things that's so great <laughs> and of uh, course no. he notices that the eyes move and he's like I like it <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> Um, I think this uh, Oz just has such good dialogue. He's always so charming. Willow comes up and says hi, and he says, "That's what I was gonna say." <laughs> Aww, so yeah. cute. Also, Oz is a film bro. He's like movies these days. You, you forget about them <laughs> right after. Yeah, yeah I only remember the popcorn. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. My time was also of the good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So great. And then Larry comes up and just great way of diffusing this whole gross Larry-ness. He says, that's right, Larry. You've really mastered the single entendre. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, because that's after he's like fantasizing about Buffy and Willow having lesbian sex together. Yeah, exactly. And he's Mm. like, yeah, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. And then immediately he's like, thank you, thigh master. It's not available very quickly. Yeah, this dude is so gross um when he yeah yeah he knocks the books out of the girl's hand and starts hitting on her um i never hit on Allie, but well i've hit on Allie a lot not like this <laughs> but not like but that. i i would 1000 percent knock her books out of her <laughs> yeah, hand. it's so true it was not to look at my ass or pretend to look at my ass but you definitely right. knocked stuff just to be a little shithead how dare you <laughs> But I will I do say, not, in don't your, regret it in a, a single time. In a sliver of what uh, Larry's doing, which, okay, oh, we said it in the summary, so it's not a spoiler. Uh, he's gay, he, so he's clearly overcompensating. Uh, mm-hmm. You had an interesting connection with Buffy. Your overcompensating was talking about Sarah Michelle Gellar's ass. <laughs> would still talk about her ass. It's, that's true. That's true. We still good, talk about how, how amazing she is. But I once you came out, I was like, Mm, that explains that <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah I, when we talked about this episode i remember we had a whole little mini discussion about how it's like oh yeah i relate to the whole like trying to pretend you're into girls thing and i was like i, I also was very clear i was like i was not like larry yeah. i wasn't like uh, <laughs> harassing <laughs> people yeah <laughs> But yeah, just being like, oh yeah, she's you're like, that. yeah, Mr. Yeah. Adams, I I got so many girls' phone numbers this weekend. <laughs> oh. he's, he's doing a reference. I had a student that was like very, very obviously gay. Aww. And he like every time we'd go anywhere, it'd be like, I got so many hot girls' numbers on this trip. And I was <laughs> like, sweet sure you did, buddy. Sure he did. Uh, no, you Aww. did. <laughs> Good for you, That's you adorable. killer. <laughs> That is funny. I remember that. So I listened to y'all's episode of this when it came out, but I very pointedly did not go back and listen to it because I didn't want to be influenced as I was taking the notes. But I remember you saying that, Zach, drawing the clear line between I didn't harass anybody, but uh, 
<laughs> so uh, I think we are really covering his distinction. <laughs> <laughs> Another cute uh, Oz line I pulled out from the scene because uh, Larry's trying to imply that like, oh, she's Willow's sweet and innocent, but yeah, but she's a freak, yeah. right? And he's like, yeah, she's really an evil mastermind. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think Willow goes uh, out and runs into Buffy and they, right? Am I jumping uh -huh. ahead here? Yeah, yes. she's not sure how to Oz. end the conversation. She's like, oh, Buffy. Oh. Yeah, yeah, there's there's my friend. I will go to her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Liz, and I want to go to there. Yes. <laughs> yes. <exactly. laughs> oh, that's a good TikTok sound. Oh yeah. That's mm -hmm. a popular one for this. Oh, okay, TikTok masterminds. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh Willow and Buffy are outside. Willow uh is not stoked about not having done anything with oz yet she says she wants smoochies um and then she has willow is usually pretty thoughtful but this <laughs> i can tell this was one of those things where <laughs> she said something and it's like Shh, i shouldn't have said yep. that she says i don't want to be the only girl in school without a real boyfriend yeah and buffy's <laughs> like excuse me <laughs> right. she, like a, a day ago this happened <laughs> and buffy doesn't actually say anything but she just recognizes the look yeah. well, and, and then eventually yeah. she's like oh i almost went two minutes without thinking about angel right yeah. and i i think this is why i love willow so much because i just do that that's me mm -hmm. i always oh, yeah. say oh, yeah. the most incorrect thing <laughs> yeah yeah or you're loudly talking in the hall about a person and then they're right behind you. Oh, my God. Um, I have this perfect example that I just need to share real quick. Oh. You just unlocked a memory, a really embarrassing memory. <laughs> I was the president of um, my fraternity in college. Uh, it was Fimey Alpha. And uh, we... Uh, Is that the music one? Is that the music yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. that's the singing one. Uh, ah, yeah. makes sense. And um, <laughs> we, um, we were having a meeting... And we were kind of like complaining about like people who, you know, I guess were in the department, but were like just kind of dicking around and not doing anything. And I rattled off all these names. And the last <laughs> name I rattled off was the girlfriend of one of the members. And I oh, just dear. completely forgot they were dating. And then it was super awkward. And he never came back. Oh, no. Yeah. It's, it's all your fault, Zachary. <laughs> <laughs> Did his girlfriend get it together? Did he send the message and then get her Oh. Nah. Yeah. Well, right, well I mean, well, don't come back. But we don't need the. <laughs> was what you said untrue? Right. Exactly. It, it was it. <laughs> <laughs> it just wasn't tactful. Sure. I mean, yeah. she may have it together now, but she didn't have it together. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't say that quote. It hasn't happened yet. Never mind. I thought I I know exactly what you're thinking. Uh, about. Yeah, you got, me. you got me. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that episode. Yeah, poor poor Willow. And she's, you know, mm -hmm. they do still end up having some really lovely girl talk and But then mm -hmm. she slut shames Cordelia. She's like, I Oh, know. oh I... what's what's Xander's yeah. number? One eight hundred, I'm dating a skanky hoe. <laughs> <laughs> it's so yeah, funny, but I'm like, Willow, you can't do that. I loved that. I loved that. Because so it was I, I loved her just, you know. Being petty for a second, letting herself right. be petty for a second. I thought I'll even allow the slut shaming just because it comes from Willow and she never does that. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> disses people, I mean. She yeah. doesn't slut shame either. Willow doesn't slut shame. I was gonna say, I was gonna say she says skank. She doesn't say slut. Those are different right. definitions. It's true. It's true. She when she is the wait, okay, hold on. I've been watching I've watched this and the episode we're about to do each a couple like two or three times, and now they're running together. I remember her asking something like, does that make me a skank or does that make me a slut? Or yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she does that in this episode. Yeah, because yeah. okay. it's because she wants she like wants smooches and like make out stuff. Yeah. Like, does that make me a slut? And it's like, well, it's still just one right. person. So no. <laughs> Kiss as right. many people as you want. Do it. Also, also, you're, also you're... that. But one yeah. person does not a slut make. Also, what like a weird question to ask of someone who just had sex for the first time and turned their boyfriend <laughs> evil. Right. True. Like literally true. just true. Yeah. Right? That's true. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I do really like in this scene too, though, how Willow, like when she does put her foot in her mouth and she says that thing about she's like, Oh God, I should leave. I'm bad. I should go away. <laughs> so and then cute. Buffy says, I wish she wouldn't. And it was yeah. that is just it's so, so nice. Yeah. Oh, it was. It was a really lovely, lovely scene. Allie's right. It is lovely girl talk they get into. I love it. 
So Willow says, what does he see in her anyway? And it cuts away to Xander and Cordelia making out. A pair of lips he's allowed to kiss. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> A woman who's way out of his league. Yeah. Yeah, true. Right. And still and still interrupting this woman who's out of his league with so questions about yeah, bro. He's like, what is, what are what is Willow doing right now? Yeah, uh what a better mo- no better mood killer like bringing up other other people. Exactly. Like, All right. Ugh. I just had a kind of an epiphany about Xander. Do you guys watch The Office? Uh-huh. I do. Okay. Xander is Ryan. And Willow is kind of Kelly because he's like, it's not that I and not not really. That's not a bad, that's actually a really bad analogy. But specifically in this one section <laughs> well, where I'm like, I like, don't want you, but I don't want yes. other people with you. Exactly. Because there's a scene mm-hmm. where he's like, I don't I'm OK with her with not being with her, but I just don't want her to be with anybody else. Right. Or something like that. And yeah. that's like the, the theme of this scene. Yeah, I can see that for sure. That's true. And and Cordelia is kind of like Xander's backup for not being able to get with Buffy. Mm-hmm. And because mm-hmm. he's obsessed with Buffy like the whole time. For, and so. still bringing up. I, I There was a stretch where I thought we had moved on. Oh, And yep. then in the, in the last few episodes, it's been like, wow, that, nope. Not, not even a little. All. Nope. We're just coming Ugh. back still strong. Yeah. And he and I thought, I mean, he has a funny way of putting things in us. And she says, he says, I do not babble. I do run on. Now and then I yammer. <laughs> Same. Good yeah, distinctions. Yeah. And this is the first time he mentions that for some reason he is afraid that Oz isn't good for Willow or something. He's Which like, oh, like, he's a cool. Uh-huh. Have you uh-huh. met Oz? If you anyone, yeah, who's, exactly. anyone who's spoken to him for five minutes is like he's a good dude. It's not like mm-hmm. she's dating Devin or something. Right, right. Well, <laughs> and so I wonder if maybe it's a little less Ryan and a little more Big Brother. Mm. Yeah. Like my my sister shouldn't be dating, or no one's good enough for my sister. You know, how how dare you? Like that kind of energy rather than because it's not like he has any kind of romantic feelings for her yeah that that's a better comparison although it makes interesting implications i don't know (laughs) though i i feel like there's a little bit there like him being obsessed with this whole willow oz thing like remember they almost kissed and when she was bad and Mm -hmm. they have not discussed that they had their ice cream nose that's true and pretty intimate now, some... now i really don't want the brother analogy <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's too much gross <laughs> uh also well, luckily we don't have to worry about right incest because a werewolf uh interrupts them <laughs> poor rips Lilia can't catch a break when she's parking i know oh, right exactly <laughs> when she's this car, like, around too, the car at all. yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah. don't want to know why she didn't have the keys in the ignition. But. Yes, and for some reason she's in her dad's car instead of her own. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> wait. We had a whole discussion about this, and I, I, I kind of re-listened to our episode because I was like, "What did we talk about?" <laughs> and uh, and um, I was thinking, "Oh wait, no, it actually does make a lot of sense that she's in her dad's car, why? given what happened um, in uh, Surprise and Innocence." Oh, where she crashed her car? No. So that was there um, no, I'm trying to remember I, what happened so to her car. And, and, and Angel it. became evil, right? Uh-huh. uh-huh. And then I... What? I, I don't think... <laughs> I can't... I don't think it was... I don't know if she mentioned it in that episode, so I'm kind of afraid to say... I guess we could cut it no, out. Just say it. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah being invited car. in. She talks yeah. later about how she invited him into her car. Right? Yeah, that's in another she episode. traded with her grandma. Oh, interesting. Oh, is she just trading with different members of her oh, family? I totally oh, forgot about oh, that. Wait, so fuck the grandma? Is that what we're saying? Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's what Cordelia says. For yeah. sure. <laughs> well, what I, I my thought was a, a little simpler solution was that it is her car, but her dad was the one who sent it to be detailed. Mm-hmm. Or like, like bought it? Yeah, or like she just got a new car, but it's her dad who takes it in for maintenance and detailing and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. She says it's Daddy's car. Oh, does she say? Oh, okay. I was just I was remembering when she says Dad just got this detailed. Okay, so but she does say it's Daddy's yes. car. 
we had like a five minute discussion about this. And yeah. You're very so clear. Cool. Okay, it's dad's car. <laughs> Got it. No, no, you're good. It's just, it's just, you know, he, he was, was making laugh. fun of us for talking about a car for five minutes. Because I was like, we're making you do right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, but I had, well, I had not thought about the implications of inviting somebody into your car. So mm. that is very interesting. And it's not something we well, see it fully played out. Yeah. But it, it is an interesting. Also, I about. thought that maybe she was taking her dad's car instead of her own because she thought it might be more impressive to Xander. Well, and the yeah, reason that was what I was wondering is, yeah, is, her, yeah. is daddy's car the fancier one? It's not fancier anymore. But and right. obviously he doesn't care. He's just worried about Buffy and Willow. Right. Well, cause I did, right. The only reason I was afraid to bring it out to is as I couldn't remember if she said the thing about her grandma's car yet or not. Mm. No, she. That's in. That's in passion. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. So that's why I don't remember together. it. There we go. For me, it all runs together, and I, I forget that's where th when things happen. That's true. Yeah. We've, uh, we recorded, um, be wish be be wish bother and bewildered out of order. So we did Ooh, that man. earlier this week. So passion is our next one, and I'm mentally preparing. I'm like mostly Ooh. preparing myself for oh, that yeah. one. That's a tough one. It, it is. is. Yeah. So, um, okay, so rips through the cloth roof. That really sucks. Um, the next day, they are showing the car to the gang, and Buffy's like, are you sure it was a werewolf? And they say, yes. I'm <laughs> yep, absolutely. <laughs> very sure it was a werewolf. Um, Giles comes over. He has the newspaper, and he sees mm -hmm. that there were other attacks last night, too. Um, I have a note about Willow's outfit here because it, is, it mm -hmm. is the most adorable thing. She has a delightful rainbow yes. butterfly necklace. That's the reason I was really hoping y'all Buffy gays would be on here is for the gay butter butterfly necklace. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wonderful. We're also very in in the 90s. Like rainbows, smiley faces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had we had color in the 90s. Yeah. She, uh, she <laughs> sports the... Smiley face backpack too. Exactly, I think. Mm -hmm. and so fuzzy cute. things, fuzzy bags. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Willow is very fuzzy a lot of the time. It is. She's she's she so hungry. Oh yes. yes. Fuzzy hats. Yes. Yep. So oh, yes. Willow's really really worried about like oh no not that doesn't mean bunnies because Giles is reading that like there were other attacks on <laughs> animals and stuff. She's like no not bunnies, and Oz says. They may not look like it, but bunnies can really take care of themselves. And I was like, <laughs> I love spoken it. like a man that's read Watership down. Right. Also, I just I just really enjoy that we have bunnies mentioned in this way, especially Oz talking about how they can take care of themselves. Mm. It's so so funny to me given some yep. you know stuff we can't talk about. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, are they really planting the bunnies seed this early? I never like put that right together. Now? <laughs> Somebody was really into bunnies. On it show. must right. be bunnies. Or like someone's kid had a bunny <laughs> or something. <laughs> yes. Right. And uh, Giles is so adorable geeking out over he's learning so about a werewolf. Excited. Oh my God. He's very excited that the werewolf stuff is wrong and to learn something new about werewolves. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cute. We um heard during some assembly required he was so excited about grave robbing. Yeah. Um, I love when he says, yes. I'm sure my books and I are in for a fascinating afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Giles. So, so cute. Giles. So cute. Learning about what the different demons do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so gym class, this weird fucking scene. Uh -oh. oh, but I love that the school is acknowledging the dangers of Sunnydale. Yeah, right. right. That's like, yeah, yeah, yeah good point, actually. A lot, so yep. maybe we should let's work help self defense you. into the curriculum, right? Yeah, so we'll yeah. teach you how to defend against vampires and demons. A rare right. We need to get a murder rate down. The stuff that goes on, <laughs> yeah, right. We need to get our uh, student murder rate down so that we can continue to get funding from <laughs> the state, right? Exactly. I guess we're not like really privy to the entire class, but I also just thought it was kind of funny that they're like only the only the girls need to know how to protect themselves. Yes. Yeah, right. right, right, right. I mean, of course, you need it for Larry to be the aggressor dick face that he is, but like, yeah, ugh. I mean, it was... it's it sucks from an equality standpoint, but also from a statistical standpoint. Right. I can't argue it. Right. Like, it would make it, it makes, makes sense. way more sense anywhere mm. but Sunnydale. Like Sunnydale's the one like the one True. place where like well, maybe There's everybody needs to chick have vamps it. around. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I like to think that later in the class that they didn't show, they were like, "Okay, swap partners" or like switch roles. <laughs> I, I'm willing right. to give yeah. the the that teacher because it was a female uh, gym teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm willing mm -hmm. to give her the benefit of the doubt. 
And we know that I'm the optimist on this show, as Nick always points out. (laughs) I appreciate that about you, Allie. And um, I'm just going to say, I bet also statistically that none of the girls, when they were being the aggressors, I bet none of them grabbed any asses or anything. Mm -hmm. That's not kind of you. I'm going to say, yeah, but like, oh, how satisfying was that getting watching him get his ass? Oh, yeah. Oh, and amazing. it's kind of like uh, it really it reminded me of the movie because the same thing happens in the movie. Like sh- yeah. some guy touches her ass and she like shoves him up against a locker. Yeah. Right. That was uh, really also in this scene, one. Xander is obsessed with Willow and Oz again. Yeah, the tag. Yeah, he's jealous about the da- dude. What is your damage? Yeah. <laughs> Xander is the worst in this episode. I hate him so much. <laughs> he is Ali, not he's fun. the me. <laughs> you. I always, I always complain about Xander, and at least like, yeah. Oh, well, a, a lot. Of, I'm a, I am definitely a Xander apologist most of the time, but he is pretty obnoxious in this episode. I, I just really love to play up the really the annoying things about him. It's really fun. I love it. <laughs> so Larry has a line I want to ask about. He uh-huh. is he sees Teresa and he says, "Be still, my shorts." Uh, He's saying that he just got a boner. Yes, right? yes that's a boner joke. Yes, gross, yeah. disgusting. <laughs> Nobody wants to know that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was like, surely not. Yeah. Okay, but it is. I and mean, if you were like your... already dating, like if my significant other said that to me, I'd be like, okay. But oh, yeah, not coming, no, not coming nice. from Larry. You're like, stop it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. I'm like, oh, okay, it's a good outfit then. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still that through line, too, of like, I mean, it's gross, but it's like the overcompensating. The overcompensation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which yeah. is just, I don't to me, is like really recognizable, like from like, you know, again, <laughs> it's really hard because I'm like, I recognize it from like my own behavior, but again, not being like, telling women you're giving me a boner right <laughs> yeah. right i was you definitely know. more aggressive yeah. then but, but it's like... also really nice that he so they show they we've seen him be gross in some other episodes but not nearly featured like this episode mm-hmm. so it is really nice that he gets what's coming to him and he gets a reversal within the right. same episode mm-hmm. if they'd been mm-hmm. like I... building it up this much for previous episodes i would have been like Buffy, just it would be so annoying. Please kill his ass. Yeah, just kill him. Right. (laughs) I do have to mention there's a background actor when he says, Be still my shorts. She like looks down at his crotch. Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I saw that. Sure, she really regretted that. Like it was instinctual, but it's just like, (gasps) What did I do? (laughs) (laughs) I loved it so much. And we get the bite conversation here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which was it, it was such a really great. Maybe this is dramatic irony. Uh, <laughs> pulling back our our discussion from our. Last I had morning. I have in caps later on. We had a whole discussion about dramatic irony in the episode. Yeah. It'll be on after that. I wrote I wrote in all caps later on. Allie, this is dramatic. This is dramatic irony. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, but it's really great because they set it up really nicely. Of like, what is mm. the obvious thing that you think like a dog bite? Okay, werewolf, and then the like got his finger bit. <laughs> yeah right hey, that that it's boy so doesn't perfect. like being tickled it's the it's the <laughs> so red <hair>. great. <laughs> so great which is like i pulling out the the metaphors maybe even like not just like puberty but also mate because we're also talking about like sexuality like willow's like i'm ready i'm i'm ready to start and it's like well yes you could be like larry like i guess his example would be like being the person who has sex a lot and like maybe has a lot of one night stands and all that stuff and like isn't safe or you could like just do it once and you still or maybe you like just sucked one dick and now you have herpes and stuff like that it's like <laughs> it was just he just got what he just got one little bite and now his life has changed forever now he's a werewolf yep, exactly oh i have to say before we move on i'm sorry this has nothing to do with what we're talking about ali i love your nails oh thank you <laughs> thank you are they nice i I've interrupted one of them too claws. yeah they look good oh, so, yeah i, I got these originally for a uh black cat shoot and Ooh. I've been I've been missing them. So now for spooky season and for I have yeah. an agent showcase Very coming nice up. So now weekend. everything becomes ASMR when I have my. <laughs> <laughs> Allie for future Black Cat Marvel. I know you're listening. Thank you. Mm. I wanted to touch on in this scene too. There's there's a there's a few different through lines, bunch of different themes in this episode, and and like I, sexism is one of them, or like the. Mm-hmm. Calling Willow says Willow warns Buffy, you can't just kick his ass right away because she says we're all, that Buffy is supposed to be 
a meek little girly girl like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And I have a pointed question about that that theme later, but we're going to put a pin in it. Okay. I mm-hmm. loved her hey. reaction to that. She's like, <sighs> she's like, oh, I don't want to. No, I was pretty. Spoil, like, my oh, fun. spoil my fun. Yeah. Really yeah, exactly. I love that. I love that. So, yeah. Oh just, I'm sure I would have been thinking the same thing. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Opportunity. Asshole up. Exactly. Kick his ass. So next we're, we're in the library or we, are we moved on to the library? We're in the library. I, and Giles, I, maybe he's just like on a research high because. <laughs> They're talking about the moon and like phases and stuff. And Xander makes a crack about moon pies. And Giles yeah, right. laughs. He's like, yes. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah like, a lot. Yeah. That's a good one. That one tickled him. <laughs> yeah. I guess he just can't always yell at Xander. Right. He's just having too he much. Giles is having too much fun today. <laughs> and he, he has his little moon with the globe and everything. Mm-hmm. 3D model. I bet our teachers were like, yes, interactive teaching mm-hmm. or some, I don't know. What, mm-hmm. Aren't you supposed to use, I don't know. Right. Why do I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good, good, good one. Yeah. Stimulate, yeah. stimulate various uh, learning styles. Yeah, he was teaching him a little, uh, bunk science, but he <laughs> no, was that's doing true. it <laughs> yeah. the, the whole full moon thing. Yeah, that's not a. I mean, oh, that, go ahead. Oh, that people emotions and stuff are like higher. Yeah, but this is a supernatural. This is a ta- right. This is a <laughs> a world could, where supernatural yeah. stuff is true. It could so, be actually true in this year. in their point, universe. Right there. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Good point, Allie. Thank you. And then we get like, <laughs> yes. Uh, and then we get like the straightest, like, ooh, boys are aggressive and act on their instinct. Because mm. uh, Giles is like explaining werewolves, and uh, B- Buffy's like, sounds, just sounds like your typical guy to oh. me. And and says, she has one of those. On behalf of my gender, hey. <laughs> yes. yes. And then Giles says, let's not jump to any conclusions. And she's like, I didn't jump. I took a tiny step. And, and their, their conclusions, conclusions were. <laughs> I, thought, no, I wrote that one down, too. It's like, come on. Like, am I wrong? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, exactly. Like, yeah. Stereotypes developed for a reason. Yeah, yeah, th- right. yeah. Like Zach's example from before. It's like, but yeah, is she wrong? She's not wrong. <laughs> I mean, look at Larry. Right. Look at I mean, she just had this experience. So uh, Xander, when that's, look at your own life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it isn't that like just it's just like a societal thing, right? Like to be masculine, to be manly. Right. Uh, heavy air quotes because this is audio and people can't see my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to be put like it on Twitter. Aggressive. Zach believes these things about masculinity. Yeah. <laughs> yes. On the internet, you're gonna get dragged. No, you're not. Keep going. <laughs> Drag me, internet. Do yeah. it. I'm, I invite it. But yeah, it's like to, to, you know, to be considered masculine and manly, you have to do all these like aggressive things and right. be gross and mm-hmm. constantly be talking about how hot women are to you and how turned on you are by them and blah, 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 blah whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's a, lo- a really lovely um, juxtaposition they've set up Larry versus Oz because mm-hmm. Oz yeah. who is super in in touch with his feelings and other people's feelings he paints his nails and all that yes. stuff like he's into music like he definitely shows the softer side he doesn't feel the need to like drag other people or be super misogynistic mm-hmm. but he's the one who really does have the beast inside and so like it has all that strength and stuff like that I love mm-hmm. it Yep. Healthy masculinity, we love to see it. Mm-hmm. So nice. So Xander closes by being like, okay, so we're just going to shoot it with a silver bullet. And Giles mm-hmm. says, no, no, it's still a human. You can't mm-hmm. do that. Something they drop very quickly later on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can shoot it. Maybe not with the well, they, silver yeah, bullet. Yeah, they, re- they revise uh, what method they're shooting, or, you know. Oh. It's true. I was referring to like when they get really mad because it kills a person. Oh yeah, sorry, I jumped way oh, ahead. Oh, true, oh, you're right. Yeah, I have a bad habit to do it. Yeah, that no, she, yeah, she has a moment of regret that she didn't just save that life. But I have mm-hmm. a, there's a kind of a nice little moment that Giles has where like kind of pointing out biases of could be a wolf man or a wolf woman or anyone uh-huh. bitten by a werewolf, and I was like. Yeah, oh yeah it's some uh non-binary inclusion That's exactly there. i was like good job good job obviously unintentional this is 98 or whatever yeah, no, but were, we yeah. love to see it still <laughs> yeah if it was gonna be anybody in that school it would be i have a theory that librarians are some of the most badass among 100%. us 100 like it would oh, be yeah. librarians yeah. so we 
Oh, uh, so when we vote very soon, we're going to have to vote to keep our library fully funded because there is a an uh, a, a ballot thing to a, a cut our library's funding in half. Uh, fantastic, yep. but fantastic. it's But the it's for a good reason. It's because the library had books about gay and trans people. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, right. oh. Well, that's a horse of a different uh, color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, we need to. We can't be having acknowledging gay people's existence. That hurts children. I mean, were they mm-hmm. having those awful drag re- story times too? Oh uh, yeah, the, well, so they, many. Uh, I don't yeah. think we have had any actually. We do have drag queens here, but like, I mean, they did have a book signing with a trans author, Arkansas. Mm, that's really cool. I uh, work for an organization that just sent a. So the book banning shit is happening in South Carolina too, and I work for an organization that just sent a cease and desist letter to one of these boards that's thinking about removing. We were like, "Hey, if you do this, we'll probably sue you. So don't yeah. do it." And it's just so satisfying mm. to, uh, yeah. Can you imagine thinking the biggest problem facing our society right now is that people know that racism is real? Like. <laughs> Exactly. Really? What a nightmare. Yeah. 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 So wild. Ah. So wild. So they're they're on the hunt, and Buffy has gone full burglar, mm-hmm. fashion wise. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she really has. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Giles does not understand that they're at makeout point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that is lost on him. Yeah. Has oh, anyone, Giles. Think they've seen anything? No. No, they haven't. <laughs> Nobody has seen anything. Um, I love that Buffy has some hot goss. She's yeah. seen some <laughs> people making out who apparently shouldn't be making out. Oh, uh, it's so great. That was so funny. And then she realizes in the middle st- sentence what she's doing. She's like, uh, nope, I didn't see anything. Yeah. Also good on Buffy for keeping up with uh, the goings on around school while slaying True. vampires. Absolutely. I wasn't slaying vampires and I still didn't know the goss around school. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I knew all of it, but I was not slaying vampires. <laughs> uh, Buffy goes into some brush and she springs a trap. And then we meet Dude Man, yeah. that asshole named Kane. Who's, who's like just... really combative to these clear humans. He's hunting yeah. werewolves, yeah. who we have now seen an example of. Very hairy. Extremely very hairy. hairy. Yeah, and the then girl he, he sees does not her, look anything like And then he yeah. also points his gun at Giles. It's like, what threat do you think these people are going to be? Clearly are, are not you werewolves. Sell bear pelts in Sri Lanka? What are right. you talking about? Right. Uh, that was so weird to me. I mean, obviously, yeah, this just... whole interaction with Kane is just so ugh. Buffy, Kane, kill him. Kane, Kane is like this extreme straw man misogynist where it's like <laughs> people like Joss Whedon can be like, I, I'm not like that guy. So right. I didn't I'm shoot people. Cool I didn't aim a gun at yeah, a teenage girl. Right. Yeah, I just yeah, feel like true. the writers were like, there there needs to be no chance that anybody will like this guy. <laughs> right. They're like, we have to be okay with him being terrible. That's why they named him Cain, right? Because Cain is a terrible figure in the Bible. The first, mur- right? the first murderer? Yeah. 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 It's Probably. pretty a little, a little on the nose. <laughs> uh, just everything about it. I mean, him, it, but, is, you know. it is also an actual name. Like, people are named Cain. Right. Yeah. But they like, yeah, I mean they they named him Kane. He's a complete dick. She calls him a Nazi. <laughs> uh, he calls him Mind Furrier. Yeah, like yeah. I there's like just so many things. He's just like you can't do. He it. insinuates that it. Buffy and Giles uh, are part of the ick. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> disgusting. He's like I wrote the quote. I'm not going to read it. <laughs> yeah, he's a fan of. Uh, yeah. Nope. Never Encouraging mind. it. What? Pat, patting Giles on the back for it. Which right. Makes Ugh. so many other implications about what other things this guy is. He probably is right. a Nazi, honestly. Yeah. I He uh, collects werewolf teeth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, or Nazis into werewolves. That's a thing. Uh, uh there was a know. there was a lot of them investigating supernatural stuff. Hmm. Trying to I was I'm probably remembering that from some movie I saw. <laughs> probably. Probably, yeah. No. Probably some like underworld movie or something. Right. Yes. But I don't know. They were also into trying to find supernatural stuff. So they yeah. might have tried to find maybe, werewolves. Maybe. Are you talking about the Nazis? Yeah. That, yeah. I missed yeah. that. Got it. Yeah. I didn't know that. Really? The Nazis yeah, had a vested were... interest in in the supernatural. Yeah. Yeah. Really? They were trying to find like relics of power and they mm-hmm. tried to study all sorts of different things because that was part of building the master race. Mm hmm. So, yeah, they wow. were crazy on multiple levels. So Kane yeah. is probably a Nazi. 
Yes. Yeah, he's probably a Nazi. Yeah, I, yeah. You know he has Confederate flags hanging in his house. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep, yep. He also calls Buffy sweetheart. Oh, Don't Lord. call women sweetheart. No. Don't do unless, it. Unless you know for sure that they like it. Like, True. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hayden can, I imagine, can call Allie sweetheart. He calls people sweets. Not sweetheart. <laughs> That's so cute. Uh, yeah, it's very cute. Oh. And it's it's a it little sounds... it's a little different, but it makes uh-huh. a big difference. That feels like it sounds kind of feels British. like 50s. Oh, to me, I was thinking 50s, like, hey, hey there, sweets. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like yeah. old movies. Like, yeah. what, what you doing over there, sweets? Yeah. So that's- I think of a nice person who makes me feel comfortable and safe at a diner. You walk oh. in. Like, oh, hey, yeah. Sweets, what are you having? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dan, you can stay. <laughs> <laughs> a keeper. Yeah. So um, they uh establish that dude man doesn't care that he's killing people he says oh yeah they're attracted werewolves are attracted to sexual heat and he walks off and buffy's like i know where to go i know where we're going Mm -hmm. and we see Mm -hmm. a brief visit of angel with tracy Teresa. 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 I knew it was a T. And it's so, <laughs> such a little stupid little thing. But he, she's like, oh, I thought I saw somebody. And he like takes two steps and looks for about a millisecond. And he's like, oh, no, <laughs> yeah. one, no one there. Cool. <laughs> Glad you were so thorough. <laughs> <laughs> right. While well, he twirls his little flower. Yeah. Which was yeah. like, were you yeah. having a night stroll picking flowers? <laughs> Maybe he was gonna leave that flower at Buffy's house. That would be such like the wimpiest little like tea- one flower. Like, tease yeah, of, one tease little of the- daisy. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm coming for you. With Here's a little one note on it that just says soon. <laughs> Zachary, <laughs> dare you? <laughs> Playing fast and loose here. Jesus. So we're at the bronze. Yeah. I don't know what you're trying and to... speaking of lovely girls talk, we get a lovely girl talk moment of Cordelia and Willow. <laughs> yes, mostly Cordelia. Mostly Cordelia, <laughs> but like there's some back and forth that they're like yeah, kind of nice. bonding. And I mm-hmm. love that Cordelia is like having this little conversation with Willow. And it's also very funny where she's like, oh, Xander is just so obsessed with Buffy and Willow. I feel like I'm not even <laughs> here. And Willow's like, yeah, I know the feeling. Because you <laughs> don't know she's talking to Willow until Cordelia says that. Yeah, exactly. It's so funny. No, it's very. It's nice that uh, Willow is finally given a chance to shit talk Xander a little bit too. Yep. Yes, I love it. I can't well, often well bring earned. people together. Like, mm. We're both and ready kind to of, talk to uh, the same person. This kind of brings up a thing that I really like about this episode uh, that I talked about a lot in ours. Uh, which is where, like, normally on teen shows, you'll see guys being like, ooh, I don't understand girls. What are they thinking? Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But here we get to see uh, the girls' perspective, and they're like, boys are such a mystery. I don't understand them. When You never really get to see that kind of thing, and I really like it. Yeah. I liked the (laughs) Cordelia says, who do they think they are? And and Will is just a couple of guys. (laughs) A couple of guys. (laughs) (laughs) It's so funny. Oh, and they talk about Xander's do I smell something look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Buffy and Giles come in and Buffy's changed outfits. Her coat is different. Her hair is different. Oh, I didn't even catch that. Oh, I didn't notice yeah, that either. Because before it was like kind of like in a bun shoved under this hat and she had some like extra like spewing out from the hat. Oh, you're and she right. Had the big yeah. Trench coat. And now she's in her tan trench coat and it's like her hair's in this like twist thing which i uh-huh. guess huh. straight hair it's easy to do different stuff but like you changed your coat did you pack an extra coat when you went still <laughs> well she was she I... is going to the bronze she has to be presentable does she's she that's true good oh, for I buffy I guess. yes she does you know she would value that <laughs> oh saving the lives fact... changing your outfit uh... listen if i'm a sleigh i'm a sleigh while i sleigh, okay <laughs> Fair. Fair. Um, so the werewolf uh interrupts this great girl talk happening. Mm-hmm. I like it too because we don't get to see a whole lot of Cordelia and Willow bonding, mm-hmm. and especially because mm-hmm. there's some like tension, particularly on Willow's side towards yeah. Cordelia. That's nice to see. So there's like madness and Giles and Buffy pull up. I always Google the episode before we research, and Zach, I know you do it too. I didn't there it was in the trivia and then I noticed it in the episode as Giles and Buffy pull up in his car 
if you look closely and you know to look for it, you can see people behind the car pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> so like, oops. Nice. <laughs> well, I wonder if that's one of those things that uh, like they cropped it really weird for the remasters. I wonder if that was in the Ooh. original or not. Maybe. Because when I watched on Netflix, it was the original and it was like four by three. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, then I bought it. And when I actually, when I bought it on Amazon, it was, but then they changed it. Actually, I think that's more a problem in the later seasons when they filmed it in like widescreen, but didn't show it that way. And so they like don't crop it in the way that they did before. And you can see things. Mm. So maybe I, I think that probably was actually visible in the original airing. Cause I don't think those sorts of things that are supposed to be out of the shot right. happen in the earlier episodes. Yeah. Well, listeners who have the old version, chime in and let us know. Yeah. yeah. Tell us. Can you see it? So Buffy goes into the bronze. Everything's a mess. Uh, she's running around. She eventually runs into the werewolf and it jumps out a window. Oops. Hate when that happens. <laughs> um, and it cuts to a little bit later and we have asshole Kane there uh -huh. who chastises her for trying to take it alive. Yep. We have another instance and of says, misogyny I, from I, him. Yeah. Sorry. You're probably about to say no, this. No, go but... ahead. Uh, he says, I hope you can live with that. And she says, I live with that every day. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, so true. Because there's you'll, her job is never done. But at some point, she has to choose when to go home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just love yeah. that quote because it's so it's really broad and reaches through the entire series. Yeah. But it's also just really poignant in light of the whole Angela situation. Yeah, because okay. she just... What just happened was she was not able to kill Angel when she had a chance. Right. And so, mm -hmm. like, she just has to accept that, like, when I don't get things or when I don't get to something in time, people die. Well, and what she doesn't even realize yet, because they think the girl who dies is because of Oz, but right. it was actually because of Angel. Mm -hmm. So we see an exact example of. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. That was some that was a vampire you didn't stop, which was a direct cause and effect here. Poor yeah. Buffy. That's a good line for so many reasons. I know. Like, writers. It's such a tiny line, but it just it's holding so much up. Yeah, yeah. And then we see uh what happens when an angel when a vampire runs into a werewolf. Yeah. That was which kind is of an very interesting off. Yeah. Yeah. So on Angel just snarls. Right. Yeah. yeah. I Yeah, we yeah. had this we kind of talked about this when on our episode. I think like the the idea is like vampires are always trying to get the easiest kill possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Yeah, that would be kind of fucking hard to kill, so I better not fuck with it." And yeah, the right. werewolf is also like, "All right, I'm out." Or maybe <laughs> so would it, who would have won that? Do we think? Uh, question. I would say probably Angel. Do you think so? I don't know. Because like, he's got the brains thing. He's like not only savage, yeah. but he's mm -hmm. got the, yeah, I can see that. I don't yeah. know. I kind of feel like the werewolf just has like raw power. And the werewolf is like physically bigger. And there's that mm -hmm. big old, those big old jaws with teeth and stuff. I don't know. Like maybe if he was really strategic, Angel could get it. But like he would really have to be on top of his game. Oh, yeah. It was at this point where I wrote the question that I want to pose to you all. So, because we get a real shot at the whole werewolf costume mm -hmm. in this scene. What do we think of the werewolf costume? What are our thoughts? Oh, I uh, did I write something fine. about this. Uh, -huh. uh I said, I don't remember where I wrote it, but this werewolf costume, though not the best I've ever seen, still better than what they did for the werewolf in Harry Potter 3. Oh, yeah. <laughs> agree. Oh, yeah. I also agree. Doesn't look like a Gumby werewolf. Yeah, yeah, like yeah exactly. Weird. Gumby werewolf. That's totally like what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah, is especially I mean, dumb because in Harry Potter, the werewolf is supposed to be nearly indistinguishable than like a regular wolf. And uh -huh, then they just show right. a wolf man. And I'm like, mm, bitch. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so like, he had the advantage of what, like, at least... I don't know, maybe not, no, well, no, not 10 years, but like a few years of advancements in CGI and probably like a right, like exactly. more dollars in budget. Um, yeah. But anyway. But I don't know, sometimes CGI... And y'all still didn't do great. Embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, huh? yeah, or... exactly. But, you know, sometimes I think CGI in certain moments looks worse. Oh, yeah. Because of oh, how yeah. obvious it is. Because mm -hmm, like it's sure. one thing when it's like, oh, it's an Avengers movie and like pretty much everything CGI. So like yeah. one CGI thing doesn't stand out. But like sometimes I would rather take like something like this. that was a practical effect and you can tell that like it's real. 
you could touch mm-hmm. that fur. Sometimes I still prefer that, even though like you know it's a person in a costume and you can tell like the head doesn't really move that well. It's not totally mobile. Sometimes mm-hmm. I, I still prefer that to something fake. Yeah, I I agree. I I think it's always it's definitely I think if you can integrate practical with cgi it's always better yeah or even mm-hmm. as much as you can do possibly with practical stuff is always better but yeah i um i enjoy this werewolf costume and this is um and feel free to cut this if you want this is the last time we have this werewolf costume it is <laughs> yes. not the same after that feels episode. safe yeah yeah that feels safe to say yeah, oh. yeah. Uh-huh. okay so you do wait i missed it you do or don't like it i i like this one yeah, this better one than good. what it, we get later uh, I wonder oh, if there was a like a Wolfman person in Halloween. I don't remember exactly what that one looked like. I wonder if they're the mm. same costume. Mm. I can't remember. I think that one was oh. just like a wolf. Because it's like, one of the kids that turns like into it. I yeah. can't. Because yeah. it had like the ears moved and the eyes would blink and the mouth kind of moved up and down. I don't think they would have spent that on a background character. Well, but they, what, they what if they knew that. they needed it for this? Right. For, if they yeah if they had the whole season planned yeah. out they might have uh strategically budgeted for that interesting yeah, so gonna, i'll have to take a look at halloween and see if it looks similar at all yeah. i just i don't know how much i should describe the future one but to no, me but i think it's worth i think it's <laughs> worth so that we can all like be looking out for it to see the difference yeah well to me the future one gives more like it's some sort of gorilla monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's like wolf. it's like were beast, yeah. not werewolf. It's like a weird were, man, yeah, were beast. gorilla. It's so yeah. strange. Ooh. Yeah, right. Yeah, I definitely like. Interesting. This was pretty wolf. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. It was like a, a bigger wolf that's also standing on his legs, but still very wolf. Hmm. Right. I'm well, maybe we'll have you all on back when we uh uh-huh. see a, a new hmm? werewolf costume who knows uh, maybe we, we might be lucky trips <laughs> that we may be about to do our record tonight <laughs> yes <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> um so we um uh buffy and giles are still searching and giles is asleep in the car buffy hasn't found the werewolf she hasn't been able to track it down and when she gets in the car she hears that Teresa was found dead mm-hmm. and it sounds like it might have been the where they we assume that it was the werewolf who did it and even though it wasn't um and there's just this realization that Buffy has that's really heartbreaking she mm-hmm. feels so guilty yeah. mm-hmm. although and, it does say two nights ago or related to the attacks from two nights ago which would have been before the full moon which would mean that it had nothing mm-hmm. to do with the that's with true. the werewolf so uh-huh. I understand yeah, oh, I understand um, her her gut reaction i totally get it especially because like well this k- killing did happen during the three days but it says connected to the stuff from two days ago buffy open your fucking ears oh, god yeah. damn oh, listen for oh. one i didn't notice that part that <laughs> looked right past me that's good. yeah i didn't notice yeah, either yeah. i had no idea <laughs> i we talked about this a little bit on our episode but i think it's it's odd that they go from like her being murdered to reporting on the radio that she has been identified as body with like it's yeah like looking at the episode it has to be within at most two or three hours yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah because it's within the same night yeah huh i hadn't considered that it's yeah you're right and everything maybe they're just like really on top of it because well, they're always yeah. reporting on murders yeah exactly. it is sunny yeah that's kind of the point we came to too is like they're always there's there's constantly murders so they're just like oh another one yep. <laughs> yeah oof Turn through those murders real quick. We love mm-hmm. efficiency. Mm-hmm. Um, so the next day, Oz wakes up naked in the woods, naked. and he has just the most quintessential Oz response to it. <laughs> huh. Just go, huh. <laughs> quote, Nifty. Huh. Quote, quote huh. Yep. So yeah, so definitely goes, goes through the rest of the day, catching up on like what everybody else is saying happened, and understandably getting very scared. I like that he has the conversation and stop me if uh, if I'm jumping too far ahead. Uh, he calls his aunt to figure out if it really is from his cousin. <laughs> and he's just, again, in his blunt nature, says, is Gordy a werewolf? <laughs> no reason. <laughs> yes. Um, Every reason. Your kid yes, right, is going exactly. around biting people and turning them into <laughs> werewolves. Yeah. You definitely yeah. need to take kit, like take precaution. Right. How many also, werewolves has this one child created? If he's just right, like every well, little finger bite is turning people into werewolves. And it's interesting that a human bite, like in human form, 
there by still trans. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. World. that's I, a yeah, really I good point. To bring that up earlier when Larry and Oz were comparing their bites because uh, you could, part of the reason the like fake out in the episode works so well is because Oz was bitten by presumably a, a human Just child. A child, right. yeah, right. yeah. I think you would have and noticed if it's that, and Larry was, was written. He says it was by a big dog. That's true. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ali, I loved how passionate you got just now about <laughs> the need to intervene in Jordy being a monster. You're so right. Yeah. Parents yeah. Just, like really fire me up. Like, if your yeah. child is a werewolf, like don't let them bite. You. <laughs> and I mean, obviously he's the biter, so <laughs> that's we also talking. definitely my like anxiety future planning kind of stuff. Like yes. it's never just the first what, domino that I what see. If I had a werewolf <laughs> child. <laughs> yeah. also also they had to have known he didn't like being tickled and that he could have bit someone if he was tickled right is it a whole family of werewolves have the parents been yeah. bit there's so many mm-hmm. questions i, did, I love the conversation the, the, because the whole conversation is like and i talked about this before but it's like it's just so funny because you expect him to try to dance around the subject right Right, yes. right. Not just directly asking, like, so has Jordy been acting weird? Or right. But he's just, like, is Jordy a werewolf? <laughs> and then he's like, huh. And how long has that been going on? <laughs> no reason. Love to Uncle Ken. Bye. Bye. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Clearly, the answer like, on the other side of the phone was, yeah, as a matter of fact, he has been having a very interesting full moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just one of, that's one of those things that I just love about the series, how it's like they, a lot of times just don't do what you would expect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. It's in, in such a funny way. And I think that's what set it apart even in its own time. Mm-hmm. I really loved, at, there was a convention that I saw and um, Joy Summers, the actor, uh, was uh, Chrissy Sutherland was talking about how when she got Buffy, it was such a relief because at, at the time, television was kind of this throwaway medium. So they didn't have mm-hmm. like quality characters, quality scripts. And she was like, it was such a relief to actually be reading a good script. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That I mean, <laughs> and it's just, uh, I, I, I mean, I was an actor at that time and still am not now. But <laughs> I, uh, I, I just... Um, it's so, the writing is so witty so i would imagine like looking at something like that and being like i get to be involved in this would be so much fun yeah yeah mm-hmm. and a lot i mean most of the actors if you because of the you know most of them were pretty much children but you know not, mm-hmm. not, not literally children a lot of them were like it was a job and they wanted me sorry that's mm-hmm. not a sexy answer or you know an inspiring right. answer yeah. uh so but yeah clearly the some of the adults had had options and this was a, a really fun one for them to take. I sure am glad they did. Me too. Me too. Mm-hmm. I'm really glad too. Just for me, particularly, I love that Christine Sutherland liked being Joyce and was yeah. really happy to be able to have that opportunity because I love Joyce. I and I feel you. like She's I heard so from some, I, it could have been from you guys actually, that she was going to quit acting before she got this show. I don't think I, there's so many, wow. there's so many stories of that. Like, Mm-hmm. Zach Efron's parents had said, like, this is your last audition if you don't get this. Melissa McCarthy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if he hadn't like landed high school musicals, like Zach Efron wouldn't have gone on to have this career because his mom was kind of like, I'm gonna stop driving you all over the state for for this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw him shirtless playing a wrestler. He's nice and beefy now. I like it. What <laughs> what, 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 what movie was this? <laughs> I'll, I'll share it with you, Ali. It was on Reddit, Science. so it has to be real. Oh, okay. Because I'm like, I don't know the wrestler movie. I'm that's a that's a new one to add add to my list. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, I think carry that's on. What I saw, yeah. <laughs> His Rolling Stone cover may or may not have been my computer background for a while. <laughs> for me, it was. Oh, for yeah. me, it was his details cover, mm. and it was like the only. It, I've I didn't even realize that it was a men's magazine. I just knew that it. Uh, well, quote unquote, men's magazine, whatever. But I just knew that it had him on the cover, so I bought it. And it was just like this all black, this black on black on black outfit. It was just like, mm. yeah. For me, it was his vacation in Hawaii with Vanessa Hutchins. Yep, I know those pictures. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> <laughs> I can picture those very well. Anyway. Okay, so Oz is at school and he's stressed out. And we don't see him stressed out much. He's almost as stressed out as I feel in this moment. Mm. So Buffy's like, yeah, they got Teresa and he's racked with guilt. And Buffy says they're going to go hunt again tonight. And then Xander has this whole side thing Mm -hmm. where he decides he can understand how this werewolf is feeling Uh. because he's also had primal. (laughs) 
urges before. Which we do also have a moment where Buffy's like, ah, you said you didn't remember anything. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, ha, I yeah. said I didn't remember uh, anything. Right. And then yep. he just moves on. Yep. That was, <laughs> yep. Like, that was a great so moment. Funny. A little bit of, I also little do, bit of consequences. I, I just really like, too, because Giles kind of perks up in the background. He's like, hmm? Because yeah. Giles was the only one that, yes. that knew about Xander remembering everything. Uh-huh. Yep. So funny. Yeah, probably a parental I told you so coming. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I really love the tension, too, of Xander's whole thing of, like, being right in Oz's face. And he's like, wait, we know who the werewolf is. It's right, yeah. in, front yeah. of us. right in front of us. <laughs> it's Larry. <laughs> right. And he's like, oh. And of course he's wrong, and Oz breathes a sigh of relief. Lovely acting moment, really nice. He mentions yeah. Larry's excessive back hair. <laughs> right again, I'm still offended. Where does <laughs> <laughs> back hair? Justice for Harry Bex. I don't think he does. He, I think he's wrong as well. Like I don't think he doesn't. Whatever. Don't know. We it's don't have fine. Larry. Yeah. So Larry doesn't look we don't like have he to... would have a lot of back hair, right? Right. It was just a joke that worked in the scene. Yeah. <laughs> yes. sure. Although I will say, in in defense of Harry Bex. It's. I feel like those are a lot easier to go unnoticed than like a hairy front. Mm. Nick and I went. To, <laughs> yeah. Nick and I went to school with somebody who like it would show above his t-shirt. Mm. That's how. That's how hairy his chest was. I would appreciate more of that now. <laughs> I have. Never mind. Cut that. Zach, you wanna. You wanna take that call? Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I was gonna Don't say, you dare, Zach. Like Don't barely you... contained here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I think he might be a werewolf too, since that's Very clearly a sign. I would say I could see that. I could see that. So Giles directs Willow to do some research, and Buffy d- walks away with Giles, and she's going to kill a werewolf, and Oz is clearly spooked. And there's a really sad moment here um, oh, yeah. between this is where I have in caps, Allie. Oh. Here's some dramatic irony <laughs> because Willow, Willow's like come on, Oz, why don't you, do you want to do some research with me? And it's a really kind invite. And Oz totally blows her off. And the audience, Allie tutored me on this. Dramatic irony is when the mm-hmm. audience knows something that the other characters don't. And both of you are like, yeah, duh. That's, yeah. But it was news to me, okay? It's English class, Nick. <laughs> sure didn't. <laughs> sure did not. Yeah, it's a very sad moment. And Buffy sees that Willow is so hurt. Mm-hmm. And it's just she like, oh, I want to give you a hug. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I bet Willow gives such good hugs. Imagine they're like, oh, you guys don't know Caitlin, but like Caitlin hugs. I bet that's how Willow hugs feel. Caitlin hugs are so she nice. Has such, yeah. She, she has really good mom energy. And so mm. when she just hugs you the way it's very soft, but like with energy. Yeah. She's just great. And oh, that's nice. Well, Willow's always wearing also, a soft fuzzy sweater. So. Yeah. I was about exactly, to say. Exactly. Exactly. Really, she also has a really great outfit. In uh, for the rest of this episode, basically w- with these green overalls yes! and they're like slightly yeah. blue and white. I yeah. love the green it's overalls. So cute. I love it. <laughs> I'm yeah. Another great thing of the '90s coming back is all the different overalls and like corduroy yes. overalls and like oh, all the overalls. Mm. She's rocking a sweater underneath the overalls too. At one oh, yeah. point, mm-hmm. yep. yeah, she's got like kind of an Easter egg vibe going. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. very pastel. Yeah. So we have our next scene, which. This whole scene between Xander and Larry in the locker room, it's kind of a lovely reveal. Uh, let's let's talk about it. I mean, I don't know if it gets more gay in this episode than this moment. You could correct, right. correct me really, if I'm wrong. After I, after I talked about what happens in this scene, I wrote in caps, hello, Buffy gays. <laughs> <laughs> well, so originally you guys had asked us to be on a different episode and someone else had asked us to be on their podcast with that episode. And I was like, how about we do phases? There's an actual gay person in that one. <laughs> we were like, hey, yeah, hey there sure is. good point. And so this episode was born. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. It's kind of, I, there's parts of it I really enjoy uh when larry's like oh i've never said that before i'm gay i'm gay and stuff like that it's kind of it's really neat what i don't like about it is that clearly like the whole thing is being played for laughs because the focus is on xander's face and him realizing Mm -hmm. like oh no he thinks i'm gay oh (laughs) yeah the fact that the worst thing could possibly be somebody thinking that you were gay yeah yeah right so that part's like a little like "Mm, okay you could have been like you could have you could have focused a little bit more on Larry there, which like in you know nineteen ninety what seven this was ninety seven right ninety seven or ninety eight because the first season was in okay. ninety seven. So it's like you know it would have been like just groundbreaking that they were just 
acknowledging that gay people exist and yeah. that true. <laughs> And having this, and they didn't make a euphemism happy. for it. He says, yeah, "I'm uh-huh. gay," and especially has, on the WB, and has like what? a really real coming out conversation. Yeah, and, and it, his character arc is like a nice one mm-hmm. too. I feel like I feel like all the old um, references to gay people, they were all like deviants or something, yeah. or they all like had some mm-hmm. like crazy trauma, and that was the center of it. Right? And no, that's yeah. not it. He's just point. so yeah. I think. In the in the context of that time, like if you were watching at that time, I'm sure it was like whoa. But then, yeah, I think it's also really valid though to kind of criticize it for like the it had to be like veiled in humor. We couldn't just have like a real moment. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice that it it exists. It's definitely uh, and, we talk we talk about in Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered of like great storyline. It would be written differently today Mm -hmm. Uh, because it was still it's still a comedic moment when you think someone's Mm -hmm. a werewolf and they're like you're right i I, i'll come i confess i'm gay like that is still funny when you think someone's a werewolf but just turns out that they're gay so it was like that would be a lovely moment and it it could still be a comedic moment it would just be like phrased framed very differently yes Uh, but it's still also a really lovely acting moment because we see such stark differences in Larry mm-hmm. from this episode. And you just like see his whole face changes, his whole body changes, yeah. the way he holds himself. And I really enjoyed seeing that. Yeah, I really like the actor's performance of the scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's like, oh, wait, I am a human, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, and, exactly. Uh, yeah, no, I I still enjoy the scene, like, and the humor of it, too. Like, I, yeah. I don't want to make it sound like I'm just, like, poo-pooing its existence. No, 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 yeah, not I, at all. I think it is really fun. <laughs> and I just like the element of gay panic is just a little annoying, but like, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, it's it's also still kind of fun. Uh, and it's it's very interesting. <laughs> I don't know if this was like a thing before this or not, but like, I feel like this is kind of like the codifier or the beginning of the gay jock trope that ended up bringing us mm. Dave Karofsky and yeah. Glee. Yeah, I mean, it was wow. also it was also a. Uh, not quite in the same trope of like it was closeted. Uh, no, 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 exactly the same in uh, uh, Degrassi. In Degrassi mm, Next yeah. Next Gen, there's also a, a yeah. gay football player, which is also played really nicely because uh, it's a closeted and an out uh, gay people. So like that's a really interesting way that they look at mm-hmm. it. And it's really I like. Go ahead. <laughs> it's really like it's it, it kind of like takes people it's it's kind of preying on the stereotype. They're like, ooh, gay people are supposed to be effeminate, but here's a jock that's going to surprise you. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a little weird sometimes, but it's fine. I'm glad I'm glad we have Dave Karofsky and Larry and, yeah. and whatever the character on uh, Degrassi the Next Generation was. <laughs> Larry, the character, is uh, is a nice out gay at the end of this scene, too, when he's still convinced that Xander is also gay, and that's what he's I been talking know. about the whole time. Larry says, no, no, it's cool. Your secret's safe with me. Yeah. Right. Well, and two, I mean, I don't, I like, those are real stories. Like, I mean, there are those, those yeah. gay bros out there, and that, like, it's this whole, you know, I guess, like, schism almost in their brain mm-hmm. of, like, oh, yeah. I like dudes, but I am also masculine. What? Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's how you're told it's supposed to be from like a societal standpoint. Well, especially... and it's reinforced in yeah. in that area because it's like, oh, but we have to shower together after practice and that like, <laughs> yes. you know, and you see, you also see it when you find out that, or, you know, when other people, this never happened to me, when you find out one of your girlfriends is lesbian yeah. and you're like, oh, well, can we even have a, a sleepover? Like, so it's definitely I think it's it's not that those stories shouldn't be told. It's that they're not the only interesting stories to yeah. be told because mm. that's abs- mm. it has is that absolutely an issue and something that hopefully is getting better. But, you know, parents mm-hmm. and generations and stereotypes all reinforce. Yeah, because I mean, the whole thing with it is like focusing so much on the not all gay people are this way. Sometimes they're the opposite of what you think kind of sort of it really ends up reinforcing internalized homophobia in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this Mm -hmm. is a good kind of gay person. Mm -hmm. Right. Which I don't even know. I don't know that the show makes that. Yeah, not really. It's just I see what you're saying. Like a little drop in the bucket of like that whole you know the whole yeah culture of being gay in a tv show i just think it's funny that like he's gay but also a person what? 
Um, I think it helps me relate to this scene too, knowing that the show only gets more queer friendly mm -hmm. moving yes. on. I'm sorry if that's a spoiler, friends, but <laughs> yeah, but that mm -hmm. that helps me look back on this a little more and be like, okay, I can. I think I yeah, even end up forgetting right, about right. this part when I when I think of gayness, queerness, and Buffy. I definitely think of later seasons. I forgot oh, that yeah, it really absolutely. does start this soon, this early on. Mm -hmm which then reinforces how it ended up being such an uh, emblematic show for the community. Because some, yeah, some right. of what I thought, I thought why it resonated with the community was partly like what you said, talked about it being on Logo was the fact oh, that yeah, it was like one that showed up. But now it's like, well, no, it was on Logo because, because it was queer. Not the mm -hmm, other way around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A, lot of, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of first gay things, right, for, came from this show. Yeah. Lots of really great Love stuff. Love it. So I think we're back at the library yep. where the there's, butt? <laughs> where, <laughs> um, and there's uh, this funny moment where Willow tells Buffy <laughs> she's violent. <laughs> just, there is one name that not wrong. There is one name that keeps coming up. <laughs> yes. I do like that. And we have another one of these boys. What are boys moment where Willow <laughs> yes. says, I can't figure him out. I mean, he's so hot and cold. And Buffy says, welcome to the mystery that is men. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a talking about, about reinforcing uh, unfortunate stereotypes or, or tropes or whatever. You're talking about like, I miss it when things were simple, you know, like a guy would punch you on the arm and then he'd run away and you knew. And I was like, oh, mm, right. no, <laughs> hitting right. you is Stop not a, an effective girl. Way. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Stop telling little girls that if he hits you, like them, you or yeah. pulls on your hair, that means he likes you. No. Yeah. Uh, it, Buffy counsels Willow to be daring and it ends up not working out for her <laughs> in this episode. True. And it also... The previous time Buffy has told Willow to do that, it really did not work out for <laughs> yeah, Willow then uh -huh. either. Really true. Seize the fish. And, and, Seize the and welcome to the hell mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Part Seize the day. Uh, be bold unless you're Willow, uh, Willow Rosenberg. Unless you're Willow Rosenberg. <laughs> Poor girl. Oh, Can't catch a break. Dear, dear. dear. <laughs> um, but I, I, so they end up going to the, going to visit Tracy, uh, Teresa. Why did I say Tracy? Uh, whatever. <laughs> All T names are the same. Good morning. Boss. There it is. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> so they start to hear. They're like, "Wait, just because they the news said it was connected doesn't mean it was connected." So I, I was really glad. I didn't remember exactly that they do uncover that Tracy was killed by a vampire, and I was like, "Okay, I'm glad that they they found that out. They can go back and tell Oz he didn't kill a person." Ah, oh, thank goodness. Yes, that's very nice. It's like relieving, but it's not. Well, yeah, because when still they at find the out, the yeah. <laughs> right before she comes that, to that realization, uh, Willow goes to help Cordelia with history homework or something, and Xander goes, "Those two have been hanging out a lot. Yep. It's time to panic or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Like, ooh, women talking to each other. That's so scary. Yeah, because obviously <laughs> the only thing they have to talk about is you. Obviously. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. The most important I mean, thing. To be fair, they, they have do. to talk. About <laughs> they <do. laughs> Well, it's like, A, don't flatter yourself, Xander. They have other interesting things happening in their life. B, if my if my friend and my partner are getting together, that I'm not a, That's a good thing. bad person that they I have to worry about them yeah, talking exactly. shit about me. Sure. Well, I mean, maybe, I don't know. Well, Allie, probably don't a little, contextualize like, that anymore. But <laughs> just, just bonding shit talking. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Just the nice It's the, like normal bonding. things that annoy you. That are still within the realm of like, yeah, but they're okay. I'll keep them around as a friend. <laughs> Hear that, Nick? You're okay. You're okay. Keep you around. <laughs> if I, you didn't know by the fact yeah. that we're still friends after all this time, and I willingly started a podcast with you, I think you're all right. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to hear it was willingly. I was starting to wonder. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm actually shackled to this desk. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! It's <laughs> true. Nick would. Nick would put me in a cage. That explains that clanking sound. <laughs> oh, I'll edit it out later. <laughs> that might be my... She has cha yeah. chains just sitting around in her house like Oz does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a wild scene. I mean, I'm gay. Yeah, I'm, gay. I'm not a yeah. wolf. I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so I like in the funeral home, 
Um, there's the scuffle with Buffy and Teresa, and Xander has his first unaided stake, I think it is. Yeah. There is kind of a nice moment between um, Buffy and Xander, and like Until Buffy is like it. vulnerable and scared because yeah. of what happened. Yeah, yeah, it's this like nice moment. Yeah, and then he ruins it. It's yeah. damn, yeah, dude. That moment, this was almost cute. It's so weird. He like looks at her and she leaves, and he's like, "My life isn't complicated." Right, it's and you so can weird. tell that he's like not even having a full in the moment moment when she hugs him because he like hesitates to touch her back. And then, Which is yes. like, well, if you were just hugging her to comfort her, you wouldn't be second guessing what it means to touch her back. You would just be hugging your friend. So it's yeah, just exactly. like, ugh, right? Ugh. Just like, oh, ugh. I didn't think what he did was that complicated. He was comforting exactly. a friend right. who had just no, been. It's that's not, pretty straightforward. It's not complicated. It's definitely not. It's just him being like, oh, I guess I still have feelings because just hugging her. Just, ugh. Yeah. And right. of course, of course, Teresa mentions that uh, Angel uh, did this uh, to send Buffy a message, yeah. and which I'm really also, sucks for her. I'm also, I, I, I will say, put a pin in what he says about Angel, too, because mm. he acknowledges to her <gasps> that yes. Angel was yeah. not the person that she knew. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yep. That was mm -hmm. part of the scene mm -hmm. that before he... Mm -hmm. Before he's a jerk. Before he yeah. ruined it. Yeah, before sweet he ruined it. That was really yeah. sweet that, especially coming from him, because, you know, we mm -hmm. all know it took a while for him to come around to to, to Angel. So him acknowledging mm -hmm. of all people that like, yeah, but it's not him. Right. Yeah. Which, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I got. I am trying to contain myself <laughs> on the future. <laughs> yes. But yeah. <laughs> I would just say for your, what I told I Oh, yeah. Put a pin in that. Yep. Put a pin in that, it. Yeah. A few episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're not that far away from it either. Nope. Yikes. No, not not that far. Um, so I we get this montage of Kane preparing to hunt a werewolf, and mm. I had a thought. He's making his own silver bullets. Well, you would have to. Any good werewolf yeah. hunter knows how to make how to smelt and make uh right. <laughs> bullets. Yeah, with a Bunsen burner in the back yeah. of his yes. car. Well, yeah. yeah. Also, every good werewolf hunter has their own converted camper van with. Yeah. Uh, you can't you can't go without one. No, absolutely not. Um, but it made me realize a down a downside of modern society. You know, we've shut we've got away from things like real silver uh, utensils and like china and stuff like that out of practicality because like who serves that level of fancy dinners anymore? But if the werewolves come for us. We're SOL. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't have, have anything nothing. silver in my house that I could melt down. Maybe some a, jewelry. I... I eat on silver every night. Well, you're not supposed really? to eat on it. I serve with silver every night. So y'all peasants are <laughs> oh, screwed. Oh, I think but... I have one ladle. Hey. I think I have one ladle. My, uh, I have a flute. I have a silver flute. So oh. fuck all y'all. Kyle, don't melt that. No, take take. I mean, the... I don't want to, but like if it's the only option to not get eaten by a werewolf, right. it's like I'm going to have to. Just stab them with the flute. <laughs> there you go. It you is very sharp. Right? Could you just like play them a jaunty too? Could you just like melt it a little They'll bit as right it, in like, line. and make a point, and then just like make one yeah. end of your flute a shiv? Yeah. Oh, yes. A, a flute steak. Flute I, steak. Yeah. I just flute did any. Steak. I don't know if any, did anyone get my tuning tuning oh, joke? Oh, I did. Okay, oh, no, I missed it. You, what did you say? Yes, it is. It is very sharp. Ah. 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 <laughs> I thought you were making a joke because flutes are obviously not. Sharp. I, it it was, it was okay. Silly. We'll leave now. Both. both. It works, <laughs> not, it's it not works sharp, right. but also he's mastering the sharp. double entendre. Exactly. Right. I hey. am twice as advanced as Larry is. <laughs> I'm a good gay. <laughs> oh man! Um, try, well, I think the moral of the story. An anti flute joke. Oh, so hard <laughs> as a trump <laughs> trumpet player. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So we're back to. Oh, so Willow storms into Oz's. and she... As he's like fumbling with these chains, he gets out of this tiny he... cardboard box. Yeah. 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 He had those. He yeah. Those I was like, already. what's Oz using chains for? He ordered... Those aren't new. Yeah. I thought I, I, I interpreted that as like he went and bought them. <laughs> mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. I like thinking that there's things that we don't know. But I mean, you he plays can... in a rock band and he has black fingernails mm. so mm. i bet there's at least two shops you can get shackles at in sunnydale yeah, yeah i right? feel like there's a need yeah, for, right. there's a need for manacles in yeah. sunnydale mm -hmm. yeah i think so well it's my fantasy i can <laughs> do what Absolutely. i want I mean, <laughs> both can be true 
Like maybe yeah. this is his first yes. set of manacles, but they get used for other things the other, you know, 27 right. days mm. of the week of the month, mm. you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So we get to see this side of Willow that I love. love. She has a couple of these flip outs and I just love all of them. Oz tries to blow her off again. Like, oh, we'll talk tomorrow. And it turns out he has a good reason to blow her off. Like... But Willow says, no, damn it. We'll talk about this yes. now. Yeah. I like, I love, so she's going on this rant of like all the things he like sort of led her on. And, says, and then you put the tag back in my shirt. But I guess none of that means anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> And, and she yeah. talks about how she wrote it out first and she the written part sounded better in her head or something. <laughs> yes. yes. And then she's like, maybe I should have stuck to my the the thing I wrote. Cause yeah. Yep. She's so adorable. Mm -hmm. Oz kind of takes accountability in the middle of it too. He's like, You're right, it's me, but I'm literally turning into a werewolf. Like, we yeah. Yeah. Right now? <laughs> yeah. You have no like, idea what um, a good because it's really not a blow off. It only comes yeah, right. in, it's like he has extremely right. good reason to be shooing you uh -huh. away. Mm -hmm. So he changed into the werewolf and werewolf Oz chases Willow out of the house. She hits him with a trash can. That is a great mm -hmm. hit. I too. love it so much. Willow, get it. I just, yeah. I feel like you're really starting to see uh, Willow's Scooby experience here. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. She's not just running. She like jumps over and then she waits and grabs the trash can, like wangs him in the face. With it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Willow badassery. We love to see it. This isn't the first time she's been chased by a monster. <laughs> you think True. this is my first yeah. rodeo? <laughs> Um, we see asshole Kane searching, prowling in his truck. And then we cut to the library where Giles is putting together a weapon. Yeah. And Buffy comes in and spills about Teresa being a vampire. And it was like hard for her. And she's like, we'll talk about it later. Time to pull out our handy dandy trank gun. Yes, the <laughs> tranquilizer gun that Giles just has. Well, I mean, yeah. he's got I mean, all it, kinds of weapons. It, it does. It, well, it does make sense, but also like most of his weapons are like medieval, right? Yeah. Like he has crossbows and swords Trails and stuff, and maces, and yeah. What do they call it? He said something too later. He's like, "Yeah, that has enough to." Is he concocting a? tranquilizing shot he talked about oh, how yeah. he is enough to put down a small elephant or something yeah he's he's prepared yeah. for he is he's a variety of situations good for him he's giving up his own personal quaalude supply <laughs> or maybe maybe there's also a tranquilizer <laughs> gun store in sunnydale and giles bought that today mm. Mm. i mean it is america <laughs> yeah yeah oh, oh. well we do that too real we do know too that, real we do know that sunnydale has a zoo uh-huh there is oh. at least some need for for trank darts so and they are short one zookeeper who has been eaten by hyenas so right so giles well, giles knows where his office is exactly yeah maybe that's how he got it he was like well you're not using this office um we cut to willow running through the woods there's another trivia fun fact here so she falls and we see some mud on her on her little overalls, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we decided they were. Um, and no, there's some they are. inconsistent <laughs> mud marks. Whatever. I don't remember what she was wearing, okay? I was looking at the inconsistent mud marks. That's <laughs> yes. what I was looking for. <laughs> so something attracts the werewolf and it runs off. And that's when Willow can run into the library. She says, yo, it's Oz. <laughs> and like, they just trust all me. To, just trust me. Yeah, True. Allie, we've talked about that a little bit. Sometimes it's mostly women. come up with Buffy. It's, but it's, usually, yeah, just... it's usually Buffy. And she's like, I think this is what's going on. They're like, nah. And you're yeah. like, really? Really? It's really bad in season one, for sure. Oh, it's, it's so like... bad. Demon puppet? That's too far. Right. Yeah. It was probably just a dream woman who famously has prophetic dreams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, right. But if it were a dream, yep. that would still be bad. Yep. Stop gaslighting Buffy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> so rude. Yeah. So we end up back in the uh, back in the woods now that we're we know where we're going and we know who we're looking for. Uh, looks like Kane's gonna get Oz, but we get uh get in the way and there's a scuffle with Buffy and as always Willow gets shit done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And oh, I love this. Uh, I love Giles. Uh, he's like, oh, I can't shoot because Buffy's fighting him. Mm -hmm. It's very in like in Ted when Jenny has the crossbow and Giles is fighting. Oh, yeah. Fire. Giles is like, oh, this happened to me before. I don't want to do it to Buffy. Right? Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. I forgot about that. You're right. It's also really 
I was just gonna say it's really impressive that Will was actually able to. Do, she shoots the she shoots Oz from the hip too. Which yeah, is, mm-hmm. that it's really tough to do. I, I sorry, my dad is like a huge gun nut, so I've I've been around guns forever. So anyway, no, that's it's cool. Really sh- it's so yes, Willow, yeah. more badassery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love it. There's a really satisfying hit to Kane that Buffy gets oh, yeah. with the yep. butt of the gun or oh, whatever yeah, it right. is. I mean, I, I still could have handled a lot more really satisfying hits to Kane. I think we, <laughs> yeah, honestly, could've, I could've, think we should have gotten more, but. Uh, yeah, I never. agree. Like, you make us deal with this man for the entire episode. The least you could do is let Buffy kick his ass. Right, right. right. Or let the werewolf get And to she him. does. She gets yeah, bits right. of pretty good telling him off. But, like, again, like, could have been more. Like, Dr. Gregory has to die, but we can't kill Kane. Yeah, it is really exactly, satisfying exactly. when she bends that gun, though. Yeah. And then yes. she's like, and why don't you let the door hit you on the ass on the way out of town? Yeah. And just stares him down while he leaves. Mm-hmm. Yep. Badass. Just satisfying. Bye. Could have had more. Could have had more. She could have, I feel like she could have just like thrown that in his face as he was like on the ground, <laughs> like mm-hmm. crying from a ball punch or something like that. Right. Like, just like could have been more. Could have been more. It could have been an issue. Well, we've already talked about <laughs> how we would do a couple of scenes differently. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do this scene differently too when we. Do a reboot. No, thank didn't you. She, no, thank wait, you. didn't she get a nut nut shot in on the last episode? Didn't she kick Angel in the balls? Sure Two did. Angel, sure yeah, did. real satisfying. Could have done that again. Balls. Yep. And you know that was a lot of force from the Slayer. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oof. yeah, that yeah. was a Slayer yeah, she kick. She can bend a nut. gun. She yeah. can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So they're in school the next day, and um. Xander and Buffy are having two very different conversations, even though they're saying the right words to each other. Xander is talking about how are we supposed to act when we see him, and and then we find out that Xander is actually talking about how are we supposed to act when we see Larry again, and Mm -hmm. Buffy's talking about which is totally weird because this is like the second time where he's been like, uh, no, nothing happened. Why? Why would you say anything happened? It's like, (laughs) right. It's just so come back. Came off so weird because like, okay, yeah, Xander's the dumb one, blah blah blah. But like, it came off extra dumb because it was like, yeah, really. He said he wouldn't tell you. It's not like he went and then told Buffy and Willow, hey, I just found out Larry's gay. He he hasn't told anybody. So why does he constantly think that people's bringing it up? It just goes back to what you were saying of like, ugh, this gay panic stuff. It's just like, right, whatever. Which. And also, especially, like, uh, it, this is in character for Xander, so, like, <laughs> the, uh, from a writing perspective, I don't really care. Well, and I it's know... so funny that Xander is like, I don't know how to act knowing that a person is gay. Like, how do I act around him now? I think <laughs> it would so have taken on a little bit of a different perspective had Xander turned out to be gay. Mm, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The writers yeah. did toy with. Mm. And I think this is part mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See that? Like, yeah, that ma- that would make sense. It does make it seem a little right. different. Yeah, because otherwise it doesn't make sense because it's like you don't like associating with Larry anyway. Right. So yeah, exactly. why does it matter how you feel when he's around? You don't like him anyway. Right. Is that? Well, we don't have any straight men on the call right now. <laughs> Maybe do we have any straight men who listen? To I don't oh, think so. Yeah, Whatever. Do. Straight <laughs> men. <laughs> do... <laughs> well, do they? Is that something they talked about? Like, I don't think that any of the I came. Well, I guess I came out a lot later than this. But is that like a conversation they have? Like, how do I act? Is it? Is it? Well, okay. So my supervisor at my job very recently, uh, he like was asking a question about something like he has a gay sister or something like that. And she calls she like jokingly called straight people breeders or something. And Uh, he's like, hey. You're gay, right, Kyle? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, do gay people actually call straight people breeders? And I was like, yeah, joke sometimes. Anyway, that part's not super important. But after that happened, 20 times that night, he was like, oh, I hope you, I hope it didn't offend you earlier. So, like, it, <laughs> it's, it is really a straight people thing to, like, overthink their interactions with gay people if they're not interacting with gay people a lot already. Right, yeah. I think, I think yeah, Nick, okay. I was going to say, Nick, Allie I think never, our circles, yeah. regardless if, like even if you were cis you would know or uh even if you were heterosexual um because you are cis i was like we I, were uh, it's like did i just learn something new about, 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 tea about you about yeah. yourself. no um <laughs> we were too entrenched in the theater circle oh, to yeah. to not know how to deal with gay people 
Yeah, we I never had Wingate. that moment yeah. of like, oh, I just learned this about this person. What uh, what do I do? Like, no, I, I was like, okay. <laughs> now I know which people to point out when we're ogling people. Like, it's yeah, right. yeah. Which and like I feel like too, a lot of it has to do with maybe like our locale because mm. oh yeah, I feel like I mean, the general we, consensus. Oh yeah, we in Jonesboro didn't... is that gay people started existing right after Ellen came out. Yeah, we <laughs> right. We didn't yeah. mention this yeah. uh, earlier when we introduced ourselves. We live in Arkansas. Wow. So yeah. Uh yeah. just for I, I'm sure you guys remember that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So your audience has some perspective. It is help <laughs> yeah, it's helpful context for sure. We're in we're in Yeehaw country. Just haven't managed to move away yet. <laughs> Our Kansas. Uh, yes. <laughs> I can't I can't not first say it that way when I see it written. I, it's of course it's very fair. Our Kansas. Yeah. Coming to you from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, I feel your pain. But you know what? Some of us Southerners, we're pretty badass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to we're, we're, yeah. I, as someone who is contemplating a move to Atlanta, Georgia, oh, I'm going to miss the Northeast. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia's easy. Or Atlanta's yeah, easy. Yeah. Like, Atlanta's going to be major fine. city. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And it's no problem. Um, they have black so, queens there. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. But yeah, yeah but lots, like, but when we we're talking about like state elections and stuff and like voting, like that's still that's a very, very much a concern. Just see what Sabi Stacey Abrams is able to accomplish in this cycle. Mm -hmm. then, then decide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, by the time this comes out, we'll know. <laughs> Stacey, I really hope, I really hope I can correct this and at you on Twitter as Governor Abrams. That'd be so dope. <laughs> you, you, gotta, you gotta put a note with this episode just in case something happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we called it here first. Right. <laughs> Do, so um, we see, okay, so they have that little conversation or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're by the vending machine. A girl walks down the steps and some dude books her again. And Larry's very kind here. He picks up the books yep. and he helps her out and he comes over. He says thanks to Xander. Xander's kind of weird about Super it, but I think it's a lovely it. interaction. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is nice. I do think it is hilarious that he immediately becomes a nice person. <laughs> right. I know. I think that's very funny, but it is nice. Like, he has a weight off his shoulders. Yeah. When, yeah. That was him hiding who he was, right? His That was his persona. Yeah. I did. Like, I definitely acknowledge in my head of like, yeah, this is way too soon, but it's very satisfying. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, it'll be nice to see uh, if Larry shows up again, how uh, he acts. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I have thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so they sit down um, and uh, it kind of sucks here that Xander is hiding something really great that he did for Larry. He was like a good friend yeah, to and he, Larry. That Xander was... like actually doesn't say anything, which yeah. is like exactly right and yep. obviously i mean he's do the it's supposed to be like oh what if larry like tries to tell people i'm gay or whatever i'm pretty i don't think xander's really doing it out of the kindness of his heart necessarily yeah but, i mean yeah. that might be a little bit well it might be a little bit of it yeah hopefully a little bit of both i mean honestly i, I was such a i was such a blabber mouth in high school that i don't know <laughs> i i don't think i could have told you like i absolutely would have told like at least like a, close a couple friend. people like if i were xander i would have definitely yeah, buffy and willow, willow they're and in the triangle yeah, exactly yeah. i definitely would tell buffy yeah. and willow <laughs> yes I, absolutely yeah especially because oh, yeah. it's like the bully that we all hate like hey look what i found out huh especially right. when one of them... and they're like why is he so nice yeah i would be like well I like, especially this. when Let one of them you. is constantly sexually harassed by him right i'm so bad at secrets though i would have just casually dropped it in conversation not thinking <laughs> about be like, it, and then be like yeah, no, I want to be talking about Will and Grace and be like, oh, yeah, like Larry. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, they'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah. Mommy. So Xander then pivots to talking about how Willow and Oz are doomed as a couple. Mm -hmm. And Buffy has a very satisfying line to me. She says, it's not up to you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also, just seriously the... underestimating both of them. Right. And right. it's just the weird thing about Xander, like, he's like weirdly possessive over willow and it's so and weirdly strange. critical of oz who is nothing but yeah, wonderful it's, it's and so weird yeah mm -hmm. and it does and it is a our friends can't be happy sorry right. and yeah. it's and it is a really weird underestimating of these specific people like yeah. obviously it's a hard thing to to get around but it's like if anyone can deal with it it's willow because she's yeah, already entrenched in the mm -hmm. world so she already knows what it is mm -hmm. it's not like he has to like make excuses to another girl who's not in the know 
So yeah, if anyone can handle it, it's these two. So outside, Willow goes up to Oz, who is quite sheepish. And um, I think they have a sheepish hot werewolf. And <laughs> werewolves eat sheep. I didn't mean to do that. That was funny. <laughs> Man, I'm good. Um, they have what I think is a very mature conversation. Uh -huh. Oz has already figured out how to make it work. And Willow's a little bummed that Oz didn't tell her. But then Oz explains it. And she's like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And he and there's the, the cute like, well, I would if you would. No, I, I definitely would. And, and I think it's really cute because Willow says, I mean, three days out of the month, I'm not the, I'm not so fun to be around. Actually, and I it made it gave me this weird, this <laughs> interesting thought of like, OK, so werewolves, moon cycle, moon cycle, monthly cycle, mm -hmm. menstrual cycle. Why are why is it the trope that met or why is it the usual thing that it's men who are werewolves shouldn't it be women who are werewolves you need to Kyle has thought of this I ginger see him snaps ginger snaps mm. oh okay have you have you ever I heard of not. it well I've, I've heard of it I just haven't watched it horror movie mm -hmm. uh two sisters one of them has like just got her first period or whatever something like that and she also becomes a werewolf and like that's the whole metaphor for the movie it is very good I love it that's so, so you need to it's like <laughs> it's the the like our version of turning red, if you guys saw that. Yeah, 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 uh, exactly. <laughs> Which was yeah, so uh, that's fucking what... cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was my thought too. The like whole werewolf thing uh, can like uh, just puberty in general, but right. like, specifically like mm -hmm. born female puberty. Right? Exactly. <laughs> and then I was just like, wait, why isn't there more of this? That makes no sense. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta watch Ginger Snaps. I well, will. Like... Yeah, I'll add that. I'll move that up the list. Mm -hmm. I think it's spooky season. Halloween is Monday. I I always end up extending spooky season for sure. Absolutely. Because oh, yeah. I like never get enough scary movies in mm -hmm. during the month of October. So I'm like, well, whatever. We're just going to keep on Let's keep with this. It. We're just keep spooky doing it. Spooky season all year round. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I think it too, it kind of boils down to like, and I like the, in what Kyle's talking about in Ginger Stamps is like a really good example of like the werewolf is so synonymous with like, these traits that are you know supposed to be considered traditionally masculine or whatever yeah. by people and i think that's mm -hmm. like where they're going with it. it's like that it's this symbol of like super aggression mm -hmm. and have you guys ever seen the original like the the wolfman. universal wolfman movie no i feel like i'm getting a lot of movie mm -hmm. recommendations this is good shit i mean that I guy that guy is a creep. He's, he's, he, he has a oh. telescope and he looks okay. into a woman's bedroom with it. Right. Mm. Yeah. And it's like, it's just all these things of like everything that's like gross about straight men, I guess. It just like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, exactly. And like this hyper aggressive masculinity bullshit. And I think a lot of like what traditional werewolf movies is wrapped up in that. Mm -hmm. And right. I think that kind of the why of like, why don't we see more women as werewolves? Yeah. Cause which, it's, it's less about definitely... the, like the time and the, the specifics of how it happens and the magic of it. It's more about like the physical right. stuff. Uh, aggression. Body yeah. hair. A very, mm. a very literal interpretation of the men are dogs trope. Right. Yeah. Also uh, watching that movie will make you really appreciate this werewolf costume <laughs> <laughs> he's just wearing like a fur jumpsuit it's very strange oh dear like brown shirt and makeup oh yeah yeah it's 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 a lot also it's very racist but it is a very old movie so <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so a shit costume racist yeah. movie creepy man okay, i mean because I, yeah. I haven't seen, it. I I haven't it. seen ginger snaps but i did see uh what was it i was a teenage werewolf Mm, which that is like that. not a very good well werewolf <laughs> costume um, old michael j fox and other but that, i mean that is very specifically a puberty metaphor we actually oh, yeah. watched it in health in middle school to be like oh, puberty. Oh, it's interesting it was, it was no, very i don't remember that that's funny i'm facebook friends with our old health teacher Dude, are you really? and she yeah posted updated her she looks great uh, she is a kid he's adorable <laughs> Okay, I want to get to the discussion on the theme because okay, I have a question about it. That. But they they wrap up, they decide the date, they walk away, and Willow comes back and kisses him, and it's so cute. Adorable. Allie, what's so mm -hmm. they almost push it too far with that ending line, I'm a werewolf mm -hmm. in love. Uh, but yes. hat tip to <laughs> Seth Green, because I think he sells it. Mm. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, he has a few of those lines where if it wasn't Oz, I would think it would be kind of right. lame. But um, I think it, yeah, I just find it so charming cute. coming from mm-hmm. him. So adorable. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so the, the themes of this episode are a bit confusing to me because there's... There's a couple. There's, yeah, there's like sexual... Mm-hmm. There's like questions about sex and then there's misogyny and homophobia comes into that too. Yeah. And what what is this episode about? Can somebody help me? Ooh. Well, I, so- there there's an entire... Let's see, what was her name? Are you Craig talking Ghost about the essay you read? Yeah, who she wrote an entire essay about how she thinks and she she analyzed it as werewolf the this episode in particular and like the werewolf concept and Kane are all about how like women have to exist in this world with this constant like predatory sexual behavior mm-hmm. towards them and harassment and underestimation of what they can do, you know, so that's like the werewolf and Kane. And like, that's a major kind of through line in this episode. And I, that's, that's, I, I kind of agreed with that point. And that's mm-hmm. my takeaway yep. mainly. That's, um, which, yeah. And there's mm-hmm. also like the mm-hmm. weird gendered, like puberty stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. ooh, mm-hmm. girls go through this type of thing when they grow up and boys go through this type of thing. Yeah. There's boys a, get really aggressive. A and, very, is, this was kind of of the time of women are from Mars, men are from, women. yeah. Yeah. Men are from right. Mars, women are from Venus yeah. book, right? And it's, per- yeah, and it's particularly weird for me that they're doing this with Oz, because it's like, they were like, oh, this this character, this male character is not traditionally masculine enough, so we have to have him struggle with a literal, like, this aggressive aggression and stuff that he literally cannot control mm-hmm. and can't get rid of, which is very strange to me. Oh, see, I saw it the other way around, that they were showing the other, the flip side of it's not about being the traditional mm-hmm. masculine character or like, you know, you don't have to be all traditional when and still obviously still be a man and and go through the and go through those kinds of things. You can have the most like primal, vicious thing inside of you and still be a nice guy who, yeah. uh-huh. who treats your yeah. girlfriend. Yeah, well. my, old, my old, the only weird thing with it for me is that they connect it to him being Mm-hmm. a teenage boy mm-hmm. like because he is a teenage boy he has this primal aggressive thing in him that cannot help but attack people yeah which is which is a lot it yeah. is weird to me that they're like oh here's the like nice male character who like bucks like you know traditional masculinity in a lot of ways but here let's give him this like aggressive monster inside of well, him as and, like a weird metaphor and my favorite thing to do is to be the art student looking for super deep meaning where there isn't any but um i also like i think the concept of like the misdirect in this episode Mm -hmm. is like it is trying to be like you know you can think about these things in different ways yeah Mm -hmm. not everything Mm -hmm. is exactly Mm -hmm. what it seems yeah or just because Mm -hmm. society tells you it's this way doesn't mean that's actually how it is because it is it is buffy who says oh how like a teen boy Mm -hmm. but it's not larry who it is Mm -hmm. right so yeah True. So that's it's not really actually point. exactly how you think it's going to be. And even Larry is not really Larry. That's Larry's yeah. persona, Larry. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. What well, he thinks he's supposed to act like. He's got a gay werewolf inside him. Yeah. He's got a gay werewolf. Well, I, we don't know if Minaj is hooked up. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, my my thought before that very... I would watch that. I would. <laughs> before that very eloquently described uh, theme and analysis, my thought was... A, a sort of a broad sexuality and the mm-hmm. various ways it manifests mm-hmm. and the various effects of puberty on one's sexuality. And then also like society's role in that sexuality. Like you see Cain who brings his gross, disgusting read of why Giles and Buffy were out in the woods. And mm-hmm. obviously like twice it brings us to make out point. And Mm -hmm. there's, and you also get a little reversal of like Oz taking things slow and Willow be like, no, 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 let's, let's go. Let's go. I am ready. Yeah. Uh That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and uh you know like the there's a lot of growing up happening at this point in the series and in the season specifically and like all of the scoobies are like progressing in terms of their like sexual maturity and stuff mm -hmm. with their partners mm -hmm. in different ways and there's and they're having lots of anxiety around that which is right. a huge theme of the episode when yeah. i kind of find mm -hmm. myself forgetting a lot too like these are they're juniors right mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah high school so it's like every once in a while I'm like, oh, yeah, these are they're like written by adults and they have all these kind of like highbrow jokes, but then they are children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why I end up being an, uh, a Xander apologist, because I'm like, yes, yes, that thing that he did was problematic or it was kind of cringe, but he's 16, maybe 17. Right. So, yes, if he is 35 and still saying and doing these things, yeah, not <laughs> OK. And there's definitely mm -hmm. examples of that. But like, mm -hmm. he is 17. Like, I really would not want people to hold me to my actions at 17. Mm. Our previous guest, Jordan, I can hear her right now texting me. Yes, Allie's right. <laughs> yeah. You need to chill, Nick. But it was nice, it was nice when Jordan was on and I had somebody <laughs> on my team. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're really, uh, you're really uh, in the minority here. That's I mean, okay. I think it's... No, I mean, like, I think that the argument is valid. And like, I mean, if Xander had all like remained gross the entire series, right. you know, if he stays this way, let's say, right. I mean, I think he's at least got somewhere to go a little bit. Exactly. He has room for growth. Yeah. So like, exactly. I mean, does he? We'll see. Yeah. Oh, shit. Very we'll good. see. You'll have to tune in, well, listeners. Well, the same thing with our, our previous guest was talking about, uh, or I guess our, our next guest was talking about, because uh, I sort of watched it just like just that episode, even though they, they've mm -hmm. seen the series before and they were talking about Cordelia. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, yeah, Cordelia started out as a Mondo bitch. And that's why we get this amazing character development mm -hmm. because she had <laughs> lots of room to grow. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and she's oh, a Mondo gosh. bitch with layers. Yes. Yes. She's a layers. Mondo onion bitch. A layered Mondo bitch. <laughs> she's not a parfait she was no. going through a phase oh. uh, <laughs> just yeah. using the word phase it as much and bring, as possible bringing it back to what you were saying about uh you know them being juniors and maturing and figuring out their own sexuality it definitely brings into a different context uh willow's comment about i don't want to be the only person in school without a real boyfriend mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. like that whole like yeah, that feeling is yeah. real. Yeah, well, I, I didn't, I didn't understand that perspective when we were in high school. Like, I didn't get that mm. perspective. Like the the rush. No, you didn't. You didn't want to. You didn't want to have had the experience that everybody else is talking about. I, I was remember that. Too, so because I was single as fuck. Like, I just wanted to hold hands and kiss. Like, I wasn't. <laughs> I was so starved for just that level that the other stuff was so far down the line for me. Now, yeah, if I had I been having like regular boyfriends and going on dates and all that stuff, and I was getting some action in like in those little ways, and like, sure, yeah, maybe I would have been like, I'm ready to like touch a ween or like have somebody <laughs> touch me. Like, maybe I would have gotten ween. there, but yeah. I was so like, it would be nice to be asked out. <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, well, right, exactly. I need my basic needs met, and then we can talk about like mm -hmm. genitals and stuff. Right. <laughs> I was really into the idea of touching a ween in high school. <laughs> 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 didn't really happen <laughs> i was also it, yeah we could go on no, that's, that's it that's it i just brought into a different context of what she what she oh. meant by a real a real boyfriend my yeah. last note um it's not as deep as the artists we have on here i like that we are um exploring exploring a meek shire character like willow being forward yes. and mm -hmm kissing and asking out and wanting to do yeah that. and that's a yeah. nice nuance to add and it's like it's nothing new like all the well, way from back in the harvest with deliver and we've we've had this side of Willow. We oh just yeah to keep oh, seeing yeah. it and it's awesome what it yeah. is also i think refreshing to see like a woman in a show or i mean i guess she's a girl at this point but being sexual i guess in a way this is getting weirder and weirder the more i talk about it. <laughs> but expressing like her sexuality yeah. in a way it's not like She's not like taking off all her clothes and like, you know, right. having, you know, like tits out and like all those things, which would be fine right. if that's what she wanted to do. But it's like she's just being a real person about it yeah. as opposed to like, mm -hmm. 
her expressing her sexuality by becoming a sex object. Right. You know what I mean? Does yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, that is the really yeah. stereotypical stuff we were getting of like, mm-hmm. right. oh, she just, like you said, like decides to come in with a crop top and lipstick and everybody's like, who's this new Willow? And like all the guys right. are excited and all the girls are jealous and like all of that. But just like mm-hmm. being, like you said, being a person, which was really lovely. Yeah. And that's not actually something that, that you brought up with like, actually, Willow's been strong this whole time. That's some that is what has been one of my main takeaways doing this podcast. A relating with all of the adults. And B, Willow's actually been a badass this whole time. She's a really yeah. great she speaks her mind. She draws boundaries. She stands up for people. She takes risks. She's it I guess she only pales in comparison because it's the comparison is Buffy, who's like you know, mm. a really, really badass person, but like a literal superhero. Yeah, literal mm-hmm. superhero. But Willow's actually badass this whole fucking time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She got to stake that vampire, and what's my line? Heck She's yeah. badass, both you know, mentally and emotionally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like most of the time the very level-headed one, or the one who's like really in touch with what people are feeling. You know, yeah. She, she does get really pissy about Xander and Cordelia. Mm-hmm. She yells at Giles and Angel. Hundred yeah. percent justified in both of those altercations. Mm-hmm. Be quiet, Allie. We are not about to get back into this. Whatever. Uh-oh. Whatever. Oh my god. Oh dear. <laughs> Restating. Allie and I had it out in an <laughs> episode recently. Probably our biggest it was... disgu- like most heated Ooh. discussion. We yeah, got through it. I, I mean, mean we didn't. Neither I'm of glad us. That you you realized of us that I was to right. The other. <laughs> and, no, you and you're stronger. You for did. It. We you didn't need to relent because I was just so clearly <laughs> right. Um, Allie, do you want to wrap I us up? I do. I do. So that about does it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us for today's episode. We hope you'll join us next time when we discuss, discuss season two, episode 16, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered. <laughs> Nick, go on, read Nick the note I left for you in the script. It says, bitch, your Oxford comma is included, and you better preview your rant about it to our listeners. <laughs> the title formatting for bewitched bothered and bewildered in the original formatting does not include an oxford comma which is wrong and i don't always encourage fixing (laughs) other people's art except when it's about an oxford comma (laughs) (laughs) language is fluid but the oxford comma is forever it is not (laughs) you know unless you are specifically not using it to mean something different bewitched Mm bothered and bewildered exactly see you get it you get it <laughs> i do I Nick, really see, and I'm actually ali talks about that I, okay okay <laughs> um uh, <laughs> glad great <laughs> if you were just too excited to wait until the next episode to chat or preview ali's <laughs> ridiculous rant about the oxford comma <laughs> you can send us an email at tabularasabpod at gmail.com that is t-a-b-u-l-a-r-a-s-a-b-p-o-d at gmail.com you'll also definitely want to tune into the next episode because we do have um a very special guest we have a resident witch chiming mm-hmm. in about this super witchy episode mm-hmm. Um, you can, uh, before you tune into that, you can say hello to us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok at at tabularosophypod. We'd be so grateful if you left a reading or a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Uh, I'm going to prompt both of you to plug your social medias now. All right. Allie, okay. You first. Uh, well, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at daughterpick, D-A-U-G-H-T-E-R-P-I-C-K, and as future black cat on the TikTok. And if you'd like to throw some money my way, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash Allie Press, A-L-L-I-E-P-R-E-S-S. Uh, or you can go right to Venmo, Allie-Press. Gentlemen. Send her yes. your money. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, Kyle and Zach, go. All right. So you can find us wherever great podcasts. That wasn't a command. Sorry. That was a <laughs> No, please. it was definitely a command. We'd be- do it now. You. for you to. I can't believe you. we want we want everybody to know where to. Sorry, the you noise. Go. Please, <laughs> if you want, only right. if you want. Uh, you can find us anywhere. Great podcasts are cast uh, at Buffy Gaze. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Buffy Gaze Pod. How charming, Prince! Thank you so much. This was fun. Thank you for having us. Wonderful. It's super fun. It was so great to talk with both of you again. This was mm-hmm. lovely. Yes, and we um, will, all of those... we'll be having you on again yeah, yeah. on our own podcast. I'm very and excited. I, 
Uh, and your audience can probably go ahead and listen to that right now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, depending on your release schedule, it may have already come <laughs> out. Probably it probably will have. Well, it's not, it's well, not episode 18 or episode 15 like this one is. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there's a way for it to not come out before. So yeah, go, go back and listen to it. Wow. <laughs> yes, uh, Earshot, I believe, is what you guys chose, right? I'm so excited. Yeah. That's so episode good. So much. That's a really good one. Um, all of the social media handles are going to be in the description. Kyle, Zach, Ali, my dog in the background, <laughs> listeners, please make proud Absolutely. choices. Yes, love to all of you. Take care. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye. 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 Tabula Rasa Bitches is hosted by Ali Press and Nick Mercer, with music by Infoton Cult, artwork by Charlotte Fleming Design, and consultation by Evo Terra.